Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. Uh, if you missed the first part of the stream, I did it like last week. And uh, you just missed me shouting and ranting for five hours. Uh, into the very, uh, the, the very darkest hours of night. I was up till like, I guess it would have been like 4 a.m. Eastern. I don't know. I, I, I started late and I ended, up, I, I ended late and I went for a while because it was a subject I'm passionate about. Uh, shitty film criticism. And, uh, we, we really only got around to watching two people last time. And I was planning on putting up a, a, a clip of what we watched last time between that stream and this one, but I realized that I, I still have more to talk about from both of those guys. So we're gonna start by finishing, rounding off what we didn't talk about last week. <coughs> Excuse me. We got some, sh uh, we got some shitty comedy skits from uh, Cinematic Venom, and we got a follow-up to the worst video I've ever seen from that other guy. So, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. This is gonna be one of them ranting, raving psycho streams. And uh, if we have time, we're gonna look at some other stuff as well. Uh, I believe it or not, I have like three other channels planned, but I'm just so drawn to these two in particular. Uh, but yeah, it might wind up being a part three stream, who knows, but uh, at the very least, I've been looking forward for a while to seeing this guy's, uh, the, the, if you were here for the last time we did this, there was a guy who had some really bad opinions about, uh, online critics, and how, like, nothing they say is relevant or something, I don't know, it was, it was very hard to actually comprehend, because he was just a little too intellectual for us, but, uh, but he's got a follow-up to that video where he apparently shits on Mr. Plinkett and I hate everything. So I think that should be kind of fun, uh, as I'm a fan of both of those, uh, both of those series, uh, slash channels. How you guys doing, chat? Take a look at, take a look at things here. Cinema Sins, eh. Cinema Sins is like the, the, the mecca of shitty film criticism, but I don't know. There's, there's nothing fun about making fun of Cinema Sins. They're just- they're like the watch mojo of criti criticism. This is definitely my cup of tea. Well, welcome to the stream, friend. As I say, you may have missed the last time when we talked about these, uh, these chums. But, uh, if you missed the first- if you missed the first stream, consider this an advanced screening of the, the, the clip that you'll watch that contains the first stream. Because, as I said before, I was going to put up clips of, of the stuff that I looked at in the last, the, the part one of this stream. But I decided not to because I wanted to also include what we'll be looking at today. So, without any further ado, um, turn off the music here. We've been listening to some Uncle. Uh, the first song was uh, Follow Me Down uh, from their 2011 or 2010 album, Where Did the Night Fall? It's a pretty... Pretty good album. I, I don't know what the deal is with Uncle. I don't think they've done anything in a while, but uh, they've been they, they're a strange a strange band that started with DJ Shadow and then like I think he left and I, I don't know what their deal is, but they've got like ties to Queens of the Stone Age and stuff. So I don't know. They're pretty cool. Uh, but we're gonna get started here, and uh, let me let me take a look. Oh, here we go. Cinematic Venom once again. Now, if you, again, if you weren't here for the last time that we looked at this, Cinematic Venom uh, made a two and a half hour documentary about his own life and all of the terrible mistakes that he's made therein. Uh, and you think this is like probably a joke or something like, oh, this is like a meme. Oh, he, he, it's, it's like a mockumentary about his own... No, it's just a bio... It's just a bio... An autobiography about himself. And, uh, it's... It's wildly embarrassing, to put it in the nicest possible terms. But, uh, we also took a look at his terrible review... Legendarily terrible review of the Lord of the Rings, uh, series of movies. The movies in particular. Uh, in which he claims that, I mean... I don't know, he claims that Frodo's too effeminate... He, he claims that, uh, that, like, uh, I, I don't know, you'd really, I, I can't even put into words, I guess his biggest complaint was just that it was kind of too generic, 
That was seemed to be his biggest complaint was like, oh, Gandalf and Gimli and all of them are just generic uh, fantasy characters. And it the whole time I was just like, yeah, but this is this is what made those characters generic, you fucking buffoon. So um, we already covered his shitty criticism and his his shitty documentary about himself or biopic or whatever you want to call it. But the one last thing I would like to look at, I'm sure he has plenty of other reviews that are terrible, but the one last thing I'd really like to look at here is called Venom Manor. And I, I'm i sure all of these are great, but this is the one that I saw anyway, Venom Manor, which appears to just be, uh, how, how best do I describe this? Uh, this appears to just be the works of Fena, but less talented. Uh, if you remember Fena, he had that series where he, like, lived in a an apartment with all of his weirdo furry creations and he like he was like the straight man and it was like this odd couple situation where he was like bouncing off of all of his wacky furry characters his, his wacky uh cg creatures uh imagine that but with him in uh, uh imagine that but with somebody less funny and talented than fena and that's saying something. Less funny and talented than Fena uh, in every role. And it's about the saddest uh, nostalgia critic tier skit that you've ever seen. Let's watch. Before we get into this, I would like to say I did, I did directly just compare it to the nostalgia critic. And the reason for that is, uh, nostal I mean, it's very similar in terms of like the kinds of skits that he would have in his videos. But the difference there is... You see something like this, what we're about to see in, like, a Linkara video or something? At least they have people watching. This video has 500 views, so let's, let's, let's get into it. like the, the word emaciated comes to mind this is like uh this is like when an actor transforms themselves for a movie like oh wow christian bale i can't believe you lost 78 pounds and made yourself look like a mong this posture too oh, i hate i hate to bully you know you know i hate to bully you know me Oh yeah, Whitey G. Wigger, man. That's of course the name of this character. Whoa. Very good name. Reginald Too Worthy. I don't know if this guy is particularly too worthy. I haven't decided yet. Now he's got his son in his videos. I don't know why he's made his child, his actual real life child, a part of his videos, but there's something kind of creepy about that. I don't know. Chandler Canterbury. Uh, here we go. Here's the here's the '90s image comics character. So I can see this character's joke is that they're old. I gotcha. Have we got to the really good character yet? Ah, oh, here's the nerd character. The joke with him is that he's a nerd. Where's the really good character? Oh, just incompetent. Here he is. This isn't even the guy. This is just another one of them. Look at all these color- Ah, oh, here he is, everybody! Percy Longstockings in the fucking flesh. So, now, those of you who watch this channel know that I'm not one to be like, Oh my god, that's offensive! But, 
This man's entire joke is just that he is a, an effeminate gay man. And I guess that's funny. I, I guess that's the, the joke. That's... I... I don't know. I think it... I don't know. I feel like, you, you know, you got a character like that. You may want to give them more to their personality than just literally... Literally just being a prancing fucking la-la whoopsie boy. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the joke is that this man chooses to love other men. And that's funny. Motherfucker's got iron brew in his fridge. Put that down. So it took us two and a half minutes just to get through the fucking introduction of all of his shitty characters. Including Hello, are you Mr. Rao Boar? <laughs> yeah, can I help you? Yeah, there's been a few complaints in the neighborhood. Uh, I'm getting some big Onision energy when he puts on the fucking wigs. This is just like that. This is just like the Onision. But, uh, complaints about you? What are you talking about? Noise, Mr. Boar. Complaints about noise. What do you mean, what noise? Well, apparently there's too many people living under this roof. <sighs> How many? Well, according to our notes, nine, including yourself and your son, uh, Eric, is it? Yeah, okay, so, so what happens now? It's considered unsanitary for this many people to be living under one roof, especially- well, I, Imagine this. Imagine chat trying to fucking- uh, During all of this, they're- they're fo fo focusing on the fact that I said the word chooses. Incredible. Be around a child. Welcome to fucking YouTube. <laughs> Some of them are gonna have to find a different place to leave, otherwise we'll be forced to evict all of you. <laughs> hey guys, can- can everyone gather around? We need a house meeting like now. Can we get all of the shitty characters into one nice, nice? Oh, I just photo? love house meetings. The joke is that he's gay. A big effeminate gay. Is everyone here? That's well, I believe so. Okay, guys, look. The, the guy at the door is from the council. Oh, dog! It's about time to get my benefits sorted, man. They'll be fucking up my benefits for better long, man. The fucking batty boy council bell ends. A shitty Ali A playing shitty Ali G. Begging. Hey guys, look, this is serious, okay? Yeah, I know it's serious. That's why I'm not laughing. You're gonna have to move out. What? I oh, know, I oh, know, it sucks. But now that I'm not doing cinematic venom anymore, I'm not getting that much money in. So I, I just can't. This guy, afford... this guy, literally with his like ten thousand subs or whatever, tried to pull like a, a nostalgia critic. Oh, I'm canceling the critic, everybody. It's over. Uh, he really, he really do be trying to do that. Support all of you guys, and and the guy at the council said that there's too many people living here anyway. Now just wait one moment. Are you telling one? That yes, Eugene. You're all gonna have to get a job. <laughs> 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 You know, I made the joke last time, in the last stream, I, I made the joke that, uh, where is it? Where, 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 where do we find it? In the last stream, I made the joke that his son here would probably wind up finding some level of uh, self-awareness about this before the dad does. And by the time this kid's like nine, he's gonna be like, Dad, I don't want to be in your stupid videos anymore. They, they're awful. This is the Sarah Jessica Parker scene from, from Ed Wood. THESE MOVIES ARE TERRIBLE! Basically that. I'm just imagining the kid is gonna wind up like that and the dad's gonna be like, Oh, what, what's the problem, mate? mate no, I don't understand. No, I thought we had a good thing going, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate, yeah. The council said that there's too many people living here anyway. Now just wait one moment. Are you telling one? Yeah, you need a job. <gasps> <laughs> Wow, I hate all of these characters already, genuinely. Like, all, uh, here's, here's... So how'd they take it? Here's the wife. Better than I thought. So do you think they're actually gonna get a job? Oh boy. I'm gonna bitch. Oh, uh, I love these shots of the wife. It's almost like she didn't even want to be involved. The first shot we... I can't imagine, Chad. It's almost like she didn't want to be here. I, oh, it's crazy. Uh, the first shot, she's like completely out of focus. So how'd they take it? 
And then the moment it finds focus on her face, we cut away. Better than I thought. And now we see her like, like, <laughs> in motion. Is she gonna get a job? Motion blurred, walking over to the table. And the moment she sits down, and we might be able to see her face, we cut away once again. We can't let anybody at the realty company or wherever this lady works. We can't let her know that. We can't let them know she was involved in this. Okay, sure they do. So, why did you end the cinema exam again? I don't know, it just seemed like it ran its course, and I can't stand movie reviews anymore, if I'm bored. Okay, never mind, she- that- that- never mind, it wasn't a conscious choice, it was just, uh, terrible. That's all it was. Boring and, and repetitive. So, he's explaining now why he ended his film review series. So, why did you end the cinema exam again? I don't know, it just seemed like it ran its course, and- I can't stand movie reviews anymore, I find them boring and, and repetitive, and YouTube's been cracking down on copyright anyway, it just doesn't seem beneficial anymore. So in other words, the moment EFAT made fun of your awful opinions about Lord of the Rings, you decided to skedaddle out of there? Well, hopefully everything works out for you then. Thanks. So when are they actually going to start looking for work? Uh... So, uh, let me get this straight. The conceit of this episode is he's making all of his characters look for work, but he's just going to continue... Fucking coasting on his ass, alright. They've got some interviews today. Okay then, name! Oh, he wrangled multiple women into this. I feel so sorry for them. Awesome the Collins! And um, date of birth, please. January 1st! 1806! The joke is, he's old. Wow, look at the reaction on her. I can't believe I've been snuggered again by this mum. Oh, gee, you, you, you golly gobshite. I can't believe you, you swindle dude me again with this, this highbrow, high tier, high concept comedy. He's old! So, I get it! Um, I get the joke! Skills, do you I understood that reference. You can this role. I can juggle with my testicles. Uh, and now make way for the character whose joke, once again, is just that he, he, uh, he likes men. That's not really what we're looking for. Moving on. I can beat Jobs Volta in a dance off in under 90 seconds. Okay, I think I've heard enough. I can rearrange the entire wardrobe of the cast of Are You Being Served Blindfolded? Literally one joke. Mean. I can recite every song from Moulin Rouge. Oh, you play an instrument? With my penis. Security! Okay, then. Literally one joke. It's like, it's like a Jeff Dunham puppet came to life. It's incredible. Uh, name. John McCanterbury. What was that? What was what? That noise. What noise? That noise just then. I didn't hear a noise just then. Okay, I quit. This episode, this is, this is driving me insane. So why don't we watch something, uh, truly, truly awful. Let's watch, uh, this one's called House Party. And this is a special video because actually, you know, funny, funny enough, he claims that he's ended Cinematic Venom. This was like five years ago, actually. So, so not only did he pull a Nostalgia Critic and pretend to end his thing and move on to other shit as if anybody cared. Again, think about how, how pathetic Nostalgia Critic was when he was like, oh yeah, Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna end my fucking character because I'm just such a big dick daddy. I've transcended beyond it. He literally made a movie about how fucking he didn't need to review movies anymore or whatever the fuck. And then within like a year, he came back to it. Cinematic Venom did the same thing. You know, it's incredible. He really is following in 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 his uh his the footsteps of of those who influenced him. But but uh yeah, uh, 2005 uh 2015 he posted this. And then, like, five years later, at some point, he decided to start reviewing movies again, and, uh, since then, he's again stopped. So, I was technically right, but I got the timeline a little wrong. He has since quit reviewing movies again, but, uh, it, it just took, it, you know, it, this was his second run. The, this, you know, the comic book got cancelled in the 80s, but they brought him back in the 90s for a second run. And that's what we were seeing. But but I'd like to share with you House Party. And this is... Oh, here he is again. I can see that after several episodes, the joke has not changed. This is House Party. And there's something interesting about this, because he has another lady show up to be his token girl in this. And uh, there's some... Some interesting stuff we'll learn about that lady as we as we proceed, but 
A6. What? How did A5, you- A5, B5, C5, D5, E5, F5, G5, A- Someone in chat says they're all balding British men, including his wife. Yeah. H5, I5, and J5. J2, 3, 4, J6, 7, and J8. I'm Jan the Canterbury. So the joke is he can cheat at the game, I guess? Oh, Channy up to his old tricks! Is that hey guys, funny? So been... Did anybody- I- you know, I would love to take a legit poll. I would love to fucking- I, I would love to polygraph test chat right now and be like, did you laugh at that? Did anybody laugh at that? Let's... Like... It's gotta be a sub 1% level, you know, maybe I- maybe ironic laughter. Thinking? Huh, I bet your occipital lobe is malfunctioning right about now. It's time to start drinking. No, seriously, I just think we really need to socialize a bit more. Why? We hate people! Yeah, isn't the entire purpose of us being confined to this hellhole to avoid people? Come on, guys, don't you think we need some more friends? No, no we don't no, want to do that. No, 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 and not requiring others in order to succeed. Guys, come on, it's just us here! Staring at the same nine- I really feel sorry for this man. Like, I- all jokes aside, this- This is just so sad, honestly. He- he- he's got his own fucking hoodie made of his logo and it looks terrible. <laughs> like, oh my god, he puts all this effort- like- it's terrible, obviously, but, like, it's still probably the best he can do. He thinks it's great, I'm sure. And he puts all this effort into this, and he's just like, Oh, you know, the point of our last video diary. He thinks he's making points. He thinks this is art, chat. I just, I'm not even trying to be rude right now. It's just, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Faces, day in, day out. Don't you want to expand the so horizons? No, Bellend. Aren't you sick of each other? You're damn right we are! So isn't the best solution to socialize and get to know more people? That actually makes sense. Well, this motherfucker's wearing a minion's hat, so I already want to... No one asked you, you dumbass! Stupid hat, what are you doing? Uh, see, Rob's right! Me. Finally a character that I can uh, identify with. Also, I'd like to point out... Uh, Good hat, what are you doing? Rob's right! I'd like to point out he's got multiple Hitman games on his shelf over here, so I see that he's... I, I see that he's work... he actually is working on the Agent 47 look, so that's that's good. It's not just happening by mistake. We need more friends! The more the Persia! Exactly! So tonight we're throwing a house party for I a few this. people. I, I can't You cannot this. be sincere. I am! We're gonna have a nice quiet gathering tonight with a few people, we're gonna get to know them, and we're gonna have some fun. Ooh, I can't wait! This is gonna be a You know, I'm a real big fan of his, like, one thing he has on the wall here, which of course is a Harley Quinn fat picture, and there's, like, medals? What the fuck is this? Like, fourth place medals or something? What did he win these medals for? Did he buy these from a- from a thrift store? What the fuck is this? ...to know them, and we're gonna have some fun. Ooh, I can't wait! This is gonna be a disaster. Okay, fine! But I'm gonna complain the entire time, and I'm not gonna like it! Same. <laughs>...gonna be here any minute, so if you want to get some food from that cupboard... Stop including your child in this. Okay. The child- the kid probably thinks this is fun now, but at some point in the future he's gonna realize, holy shit, my dad really included me in this, like, I would call this a midlife crisis, but according to his biopic that he made about himself, this has just been his entire life crisis. I'm very excited. Oh, hi, yeah. Oh, that must be them now. Quick! Don't forget the crisps. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. Why? It'll be fun! Oh my We've never God. even met these people! They could be anybody! <laughs> <laughs>
And here we meet the other token girl uh, that will be showing up in this video. Uh, she... I don't know, maybe something happened to the other chick? The, 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 chi the lady that was in his first video that name withheld upon request that lady uh i don't know because we'll learn that some that this this girl did not have a very good working experience with uh cinematic venom to say the least who the hell are you demon woman demon woman for the first time i've been called that guys it's sarah hi Lovely weather we're having. Well, even she is not appreciating this character's presence, and she's scripted to be there. What's your favorite kind of butterfly? Guys, I think I get it. The joke is not just that he's gay, but also that he's really annoying. And so any criticisms we have about how fucking annoying this fucking character is, uh, they're just invalid, frankly, because clearly that was the point, and we're all just dumb, dumb wads, dumb heads. Dead. Dead cute, they sure are. <laughs> you ever play Tiddlywinks? Uh... <gasps> and a roller coaster! Oh my god, there's so many people! <gasps> and they all look the same! So do you two! It's, it's at you! You're all. Okay, you know, I don't even really think we need to watch much more of this. This is truly. This is one of those things where it's just draw it's just draining the life out of me but but I do want to show I do want to show this uh shut up I do want to show this the the downfall of cinematic venom once again because uh where in the thing it's oh what the hell a new pinned thing what the fuck what happened to the old pinned thing how am I supposed to know? <laughs> How am I supposed to know where the thing is in the video when you... Is it in here? No, it's not. He took... Guys, he updated this video in the last two days with a full response to EFAP. I don't think they've th talked about him in, like, a long time. I, I did, but... But... He got rid of the fucking guide to, like, the timestamps of where his shit was in this... In this video, but here's this girl. I, I found oh, yeah. it. During this time, I became friends with a YouTuber called Naomi Sanders. Now, two months ago, Naomi came out to speak about her experience and claimed that I verbally abused her. I'm done running and hiding away every time I see your face, every time I see something connected to you, every time I see someone that even... That's saying a lot from this girl. ...remotely knows you. Not a bully stream, we're just making jokes. Because I'm scared that they will tell you something about me and you will spread that as lies. And twist it in a way to make it fit your narrative. Because you emotionally and mentally abused me during our friendship in 2018. And you still continue to do so when you made a diss track about me, when you used fake... Yeah, that's another thing to remember, chat. This, this man seems to make, like, unironically make, like like, diss tracks about anyone in his life that wrongs him. He's like a Spider-Man villain, except really lame. Uh, so he's like a Spider-Man villain. Uh, and he just makes, he just makes, like, Oh, I'll show you! I'll come back with the hippest, illest diss track you've ever seen! And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite something. Uh, has sorted me out a lot. <laughs> You have loved me when I couldn't love myself You picked up me when I wanted to give up the help What I'm trying to say is they don't understand my ways But you're the reason that I am the man I am today And I want to clap Well, that's, uh, you know, nobody deserves to be insulted that gravely Um Mental illness and how it's damaged about me When you used fake accounts to message me and call me ugly I am done, Robert Bohr, Cinematic Venom you cannot make- She made like fucking fake accounts to call her ugly? What is this? Let me hide from you anymore. I don't even know if I believe this because that sounds so, so dumb, but like we just heard him rapping. So, I mean, I don't know. You are a horrible, 
horrible person. Horrible. You do all these things, and then when it comes back to you, you claim mental illness and how it's damaging to you. Do you see what you do is damaging to everyone that you know? Naomi met me through Change the Channel, and we quickly became friends. She- Yeah, and uh, you apparently did to her what you usually do with your friend. Well, you know, actually, let's, let's, let's keep watching. She had friends who used to be on Channel Awesome, so she was quite, you know, close with Change the Channel. You know, we started talking, and she joined the infamous- Someone in chat says this is fake. Dude, you don't just make a two- You don't just make a two and a half hour documentary about yourself when it's fake. What? No. Even if it, it even if it was, that's just too much. Group chat. She chat. was really into movies, really into music, and she said that I had inspired her to get back into YouTube production. Oh, Me yeah. and real, real inspiration over here. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he had a falling out with another one of his token girls. I don't know if he made a, I don't know if he made a diss track about her, but I would like to see... Oh god, oh god, oh god. Let's let's take a look at oh. this. So this is a response... I... I... Oh my god, it's an hour-long response on his side channel. What the fuck? I think this came out before I did my review! What the fuck? I mean, review, I... I stream it came out before i did my fucking stream so that he had this on in the works like before i even got to got, wow so this is completely unrelated to i figured he just got some like people commenting on his videos or whatever and he was like oh it's from efap again and and he didn't realize that maybe it was like some some idiots from my stream who apparently want to go and like hound you, you know i i don't i don't think i need to tell you people uh that i what's the nicest way to put this i overestimate chat's intelligence sometimes that's the nicest way i can think to put it and i assume that chat is not filled with a bunch of fucking laughing hyenas from the from the lion king who are going to come along and just like, ah, your video sucks on someone's comments. Like, that's not really what we do around here. But, uh, you know, I, I accept that there's always going to be a couple couple dummies who do that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, this seems to be completely unrelated. I guess he just had some resurgence in popularity, I guess, of the EFAP stream. I, I don't know. Let's let's watch. Oh, it is the Why did it take him a year to respond video to it? you've all been waiting for and probably by this point don't give a shit about. Woo! Uh, why, you know, okay, listen, you're only allowed a certain semblance of self-awareness, but when you, uh, to, to, no, just no. Woo, we're finally here. Everything about this is just pain. So, I'm gonna give you a quick recap. You've even got a fake PewDiePie style chair. App if you somehow- And he's got a shirt that says Daddy, I just noticed that now. Missed all of this. So, I did a review of Lord of the Rings in March 2017. Oh my god, it was like four years ago. What the fuck, guy? I dropped it. I had about 600 subscribers at that point. People liked it. Years go by. Wait a second, wait a second. You're telling me that in 2017, you had about 600 subscribers? And here I thought, here I came along thinking that he had like at least a few thousand when he decided to, oh guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end cinematic venom, guys. I know you guys don't want me to, and there's so many fans who are asking me not to, but I'm gonna end, like, no, he just had like a couple hundred people. Like, probably watching him ironically, probably most of those fucking hun couple hundred people started following him like 10 years ago or something. And I improve, uh, when I did this review, I didn't really know, uh, much about movies. Um, and I was still getting my footing with the video style that I was doing. You no, know, you never really looked back, never really questioned it. Then we get to 2020, the, the wonderful year. I was having a really bad weekend, and then I was informed that I was featured on a live stream. They have a lot more subscribers, hundreds and thousands of subscribers. They featured my review on there, where they streamed for like seven or nine hours or something, and they proceeded to rip it 
a new one to the point I got a lot of hate on that video, uh, mass dislikes, uh, mass negative comments. And I love the concept that like, oh yeah, they made all, they made so much fun of my video, so everybody started disliking it. It's like, no, they found your video. And then independently of anything they did, people saw what you had to say in your video and thought, wow, this was really stupid. And they wouldn't have noticed how stupid the things you said were before they saw that, that stream. But yeah, I, I just, I always hear that from people when they're like, oh yeah, you know, everything was great. And then so-and-so found my channel. And then it's like, no, so-and-so showed people, they shined a spotlight on your channel. And people were just, like, <laughs> drawn to your own antics. It bothered me. <laughs> I, um, did tweet about it and was a little bitch. I can't even front. I handled Can't it poorly. It. I was going through a bad time and I took these words on the internet too seriously and cried. and was like, they're bullying me and, and, and all of this stuff. And it was all very, very dramatic. <laughs> If you're on the internet, you talk shit, you gotta, you gotta take it as well. You can dish it out, you gotta take it. Well, you know what? That's a very adult, uh, 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 uh mindset. And I'm, I'm glad that he at least feels that way now. Uh, because, you know, that's something that we can agree on. Uh, if, if you want to make fun of, I don't know, the video where I played, uh, One Winged Angel on my keyboard or something. If you want to make fun of that, you could do that. So it's like, it's fine. But I, I just, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people that, that don't have that philosophy. So hearing somebody say, you know, eh, you dish it out. You got to be able to take it. Eh, eh, you know, one, one respect point earned, you know. So there we go. I wanted to do this video to uh, just address it because I haven't watched this review since it dropped. So I haven't watched this in four years and I'm going to respond to the criticisms, but I'm not alone. I am here with Simone here, who is a Lord of the Rings fan. Hello. And if I remember correctly, you left a comment on that review at the time calling it the greatest review. Oh my God, what is this? Online. He got some guy from three years ago to come do this video with him. Oh my God. Look, okay, look, 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 okay. I've evolved. He was 14 at the time. Yeah, he's evolved now. He's still underage, but now he's apparently not evolved enough to stop watching this guy, but that's fine. Oh, so you think the review shit? Hello, Bear. Welcome to the no, stream. I didn't say that either. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get in. Bear, if you're, if you're just catching up, he, uh, he's responded to the EFAP stream. Uh, which just happened to be like a couple days before I did my stream uh, about this, but but that's 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 just some wild timing right there. But uh, but yeah, uh, uh, in this in this response that happened like a year after they did their stream about it, uh, he he's brought in some guy who commented on his fucking vid video like four years ago when it came out. To this, right, I wanna see what all the fuss is about. Let's see how bad this is. They're counting on you. And for what? To unsubscribe? Yeah, should we address the hole in the wall? Ah, uh, uh, look, yeah. <laughs> the personal insults are mostly based on facts. Like, I, I I, can't be mad at saying I've got yellow teeth and saying, you know, making fun of a hole in the wall. They're facts. I have yellow teeth, there's a hole in the wall. Like, I can't, I can't even, I can't be mad at that because it's... Well, listen, I, I have a hole in my wall because I too don't have a fucking door stopper and I wound up opening my door a little too hard like five years ago and yada, yada, yada. Now I'm desperately looking for a new apartment, but... <laughs> But, you know, I have the good sense at least not to aim the camera at the hole in my wall, you know? Like, <laughs> you just, I don't know. It's, it's, I guess, uh, I guess he's more, he's more unfiltered than me. So I can't even, I can't it's even fact. front. I really think people are going to give a shit what I actually have to say. What do you mean? I mean, I haven't even started the review yet. Look at that dislike bar. Yeah, the 42 million people that watch that. Hmm. <laughs> that aged well. <laughs> I love Lord of the Rings. My parents can't stand it. Alright, well, listen, I, I'm i sure the rest of this video is 
also funny, and I'm sure he's got a lot of responses to the things that were said, but but I'm uh, I'm good. I'm I'm good. Uh, we haven't really. Uh, oh, shut up. We haven't even really started uh, with with his his. Uh, his fan we haven't really started looking at terrible film criticism yet so i would like to get on to that i would like to move off from cinematic venom we've had we've had some fun we've had a good time uh but now it's time to return and again chat if you were here last time you you know what we're you know what we're in for next and holy shit someone hold me the fuck back uh it's time for more of this guy, Neo Jesus here, who I really liked his video so much. I really liked his last video quite a lot. And, uh, you know, I've been looking forward to, uh, to, to, to watching this. Uh, as you can see, if you didn't see the last one, he basically had these incredibly smug opinions about how, like, every film critic on the internet doesn't know what they're talking about yms is an idiot he kind of alluded to red letter media not knowing what they're talking about but he didn't technically say it but he kept like showing shots of them while talking while he was like oh yeah and there's other people that don't know anything about film this guy looks like he's like a hundred pounds soaking wet uh, he's like fucking 15 and he's in his first year of film school and he's got the most critical and important takes about film critique on the internet. Basically, he was just saying, I don't know, in its purest form, he was saying that, like, it takes a lot of effort to make a movie that's mediocre, and it costs the same amount. So you can't criticize Transformers for doing less with its budget than, like, I don't know, Marriage Story uh did i i guess it's real i can't listen i'm trying i'm j i'm trying to generously describe it in the best way that i can uh the only if you haven't seen it i i i implore you chat to check out the the live clip that i'll probably be putting up tomorrow because as i said at the beginning of the stream i've been wanting to put up live clips of both the cinematic venom segment and the segment featuring this guy but I wanted to actually finish both of those segments, and that's what we're doing now. So let's uh, let's watch this video. What movie critics don't understand? Oh boy! Come on. There has to be some reporting in every review. I mean, first of all, you have to play fair with your reader. Here's what I think a movie review should do. The first thing it should do it should give some notion to the reader of what the movie is about and what it is like mm -hmm. if you play fair with your reader you can give a movie a bad review and they'll still be able to read that review and know that they would like to go see that movie by the way reminder that roger ebert is the brain trust that said that uh, video games can't be art because he played mario or something uh... so you know proceed with caution here I don't know, I always hear people uh, holding up Roger Ebert uh, as, like, the fucking pinnacle of film criticism, and I guess he's the most recognizable one, but if there's any, if there's ever been any critic that proved that you shouldn't listen to everything a critic tells you, uh, it's probably Jay Sherman, or this guy. You shouldn't just, you know, blast it in such a way that the reader would think no reasonable person would ever want to go to this film. You have to give the movie its day in court, too. There has to be something in there that conveys what the experience is like. So, Gabe, it's you! So not too long ago, I released a video where I discussed some of my biggest problems with internet movie critics. This video isn't going to be like that video. No. This video is for the most part unscripted, and there won't be any fancy editing in the video either. So oh, thank God, because that was sure obnoxious last time. Uh, I can't wait to hear your unscripted thoughts. So I wanted to just have a much more relaxed discussion about the topic. Sure. I also just really wanted to test this new Sony F3 that I'm filming this on. As Guys, I have a fucking high quality film camera because I know movies, okay? I'm really smart and I know a lot about movies and that's why I have this fancy new camera. None of your opinions matter in comparison to mine. Well, as the new road anti Okay, maybe I'm reading a little too much into him having a new camera. But you didn't see the last. If you didn't, if you didn't catch the last stream, I I'm just get. Listen, 
Listen, again, I don't, I don't condone any kind of harassment to anybody that I ever talk about, but I will say I strongly dislike this man's opinions. Uh, that doesn't mean go and tell him that or sh shit up his comments or whatever. That just means, you know, I'm allowed to have my opinion and he's allowed to have his and uh, we can all just proceed on our merry way. Before this recording, all the audio. First of all, I'd like to explain my last video and answer some of the questions about why I included certain movie critics and then excluded certain others. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, I wanted to do the video without name dropping anyone at all because generally speaking, I feel like videos where you discuss other YouTubers and content creators by critiquing them and calling them out by name is generally really sensationalist and there's not really any right way to do yeah. it without coming off as if you're looking for attention. Well, that sure is how it came off, but uh, more so it just it came off as, like, pretty smug in general. It, I mean, it seemed more smug probably because you told... Because you said what you're... Like, who you were talking about, and I could directly compare it as, like, a viewer of those channels and be like, well, no, this, one, this critique is not valid, this one's stupid, no, this is just completely wrong. Uh, so it might have actually been better if he had just not named any names, and then I could have just been like, oh, who's he talking about? Oh, I don't know, maybe there's some guy out there who does these stupid things. But when he directly says, oh, Adam from YMS does this, this, and this, and I'm like, no, I saw that video before a couple times, and that's not true. And it's like, I don't know. Kind of, Kind of undercuts your point. But I eventually realized that if I didn't specifically state who the people that were suffering from the problems that I talked about actually- Suffering from the problems. You know, guys, I just want to help educate you. I just- I just really hope that you can learn to wait for it. That's right. Do better. You know, I just hope you can learn to be good- good allies. Honestly. If they were, I would probably just confuse a lot of people, and I'd get a lot of comments asking me if I was talking about X movie reviewer or Y movie reviewer. Oh, I think some people in chat are uh, aware of something else. There's another stream planned soon, boys. A new villain enters our ro- well, no, a returning villain from our past rogues gallery has been unmasked uh, for once and for all, and I'm- I'm looking forward to sharing some of that with you guys, but uh, but uh, that's that's a tale for another stream. We're, true. Believers. So I just ultimately decided that it would be best to just come right out and speak my mind. Unfortunately, though, I still got a lot of comments from people asking me what my opinions on certain critics that I didn't include in the video are, and for the most part, the critics that I didn't include in the video fall into two main categories. There's the people that I wanted to discuss more thoroughly than I could have realistically done in this video, in which case those critics will get their own individual video somewhere along the line. And then there's the people that I just really didn't have that much to say about. The most popular- I wonder if he ever did the, his own individual videos about some of those critics. I'd really like to see it. The person in this category would be I Hate Everything, who I originally right. wanted to include in the video, but after going back and watching a lot of his content, I found that the overwhelming majority of it is pretty much just boring because really? he tends to only go after low-hanging fruit by only reviewing movies that already have overwhelmingly negative reviews. Yeah, that's the point of his series. It's called The Search for the Worst. That's not going after low-hanging... Well, yeah, I mean, I guess by definition it is because that's entertaining, but... What? What? He's not a... F He's not like a fucking default film reviewer. He started by just making jokes, making videos about everything. And then he was like, oh, well, you know, movies are bad too. And he started watching shitty movies. God, we're already out the gate with stupid takes. Jesus. On places like Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. And personally, I just don't see what's so entertaining about shitting all over a movie that hundreds of people have already shit on before you did. But with that out of the way, I wanted to talk- Because there's a lot to learn from watching somebody do something terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, which is why we're all enjoying watching your videos right now. But, but yeah, there's a lot to, to learn from that. There's a lot of comedy that can be gleaned from that. I don't know if this man's just never heard of Mystery Science Theater or something. Or maybe he thinks they're the death of criticism or something too, but... More about what I think is the biggest problem with movie critics here on YouTube. After a long year of shitting on movies and shitting on the people that make those movies, cynical movie critics all over YouTube will make a video about their favorite films of the year. Some may even go as far to make a video about their favorite films of all time. Are we really going to make 
people liking things a problem now, too? And while there are subtle differences between everyone's lists, a lot of the times you see the same five movies on there. And they're usually the films that everyone already praised endlessly at the Academy Awards earlier in the- That's so incredibly not true. If you've ever listened to YMS talk about the Academy Awards, uh, there's not a lot of respect that goes around- Not, not a lot of people respect Academy Award choices these days. Sometimes good movies happen to overlap with the things that the Academy decides to give awards to, like fucking Parasite winning Best Picture, but, I mean, oh god, this is, this is, this is monumental. Hey, chat, chat, remember last time he, he critiqued Adam because he didn't like Precious, even though Precious had a good Rotten Tomatoes score and it was well received by by critics and the Academy. And now he's cr complaining that critics like too many movies that are well received by other critics and the Acad- This is- this is a- this is an out of season April Fool's joke, isn't it? Year. The Wolf of Wall Street, The Revenant, Room, Boyhood, Moonlight, all of these made a lot of people's top 10 lists at the end of the year. And while these movies are good, and yes, they may be some of the best films that came out that year, if the title of your video is My Favorite Films of 2019, are you really sharing your favorite movies or just the ones that were good? There's often a lot of Maybe he... What? 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 Ah. Oh. I just, you know, I run out of things to even say. Like, no, that's just wrong. I mean, no, I guess it's not wrong because he phrases it like it's a question and he's like, oh, but are they though? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Like, when I listen to fucking Red Ladder Media, specifically them, talk about, like, the, the movies that, that they really liked in a year, they'll talk about stuff that I've never heard of. Like, oh, Ingrid Goes West. Oh, that's a cool movie. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Oh, nobody ever talked about this, but it's got a good cast and a good premise and it gets a good score. And it's like, yeah... You get them talking about movies like Psycho Goreman or whatever. No, I'm not sure these are exactly big fucking Hollywood, like, like, what are you talking about? Really good movies that come out throughout the year that just don't make it to the level of Oscar worthy. And That's I right, chat member. You're not allowed to like movies that other people like unless you don't like a movie like Precious that other people like, in which case you're... Just a cynical, nitpicking liar, I guess. Never see any internet movie critics even so much as mention a lot of them. And I guess you could make the argument that a lot of movie critics may not have seen these movies or just don't have the same taste as me. But in a sea of internet movie critics, you would think that there would be at least one popular film critic that would have something to say about any of these movies, good, bad, or indifferent. But that's... Th they do! They do! <laughs> Oh my god, Ralph the Movie Maker made a critical video about Joker because he didn't like it, even though everybody else liked it, and it was like his most divisive video ever. Doesn't that, doesn't that, isn't that a good example of how you're wrong? I, again, Red Letter Media constantly talks about things that I've never fucking heard of, and then I look them up and it's like, oh yeah, it seems like it's a an underrated gem that some people might appreciate. It might not be a great movie, but they talk about something that's like, oh yeah, it's got this and that problem, but it's got a good idea behind it, or it's got like, you know, passion behind it or something. And it's like, yeah, it gets like a five out of 10 on IMDb, but they're, they're showing it off because they like it. What, like maybe he's just, this is the problem, right? Is when he doesn't specifically name names, I'm left to be like, who are you actually criticizing here? Because based on everybody that I can think of, you're wrong. <laughs> like, I, 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 I've seen a few people talk uh, about how much they like the movie uh, Wolf Walkers this year. The un unknown little, like, Irish animated movie that basically nobody's fucking heard of because it's, uh, it's on Apple TV or some shit. And I'm pretty sure it's getting like, no Oscar buzz, or maybe very limited. I mean, obviously, the Oscars are bought and paid for by Disney, so it's like, no, Soul's gonna win. But, you know, I've been seeing, like, I I hate everything. I saw YMS talk about it. I've seen other people talking about this small, unknown movie 
what it what the fuck where again maybe he is talking about a specific critic that is guilty of these things but based on the last video that i saw of his where he named names and most of the things he said were wrong i'm just left to be like yeah maybe he's talking about the people that i watch too he the only one he named so far was i hate everything and from what i remember of his videos when he's he does uh well he does the search for the worst and that's been going for like six years now but but he's also do he also does uh, more recently the quest for the best, where he actually tries to find good movies that he might like, and yeah, I mean a lot of those aren't like big, you know, super well known Oscar bait movies. This is just, I feel like he's just creating these arguments like out of thin air, and he's just really good at seeming like he believes them i don't know but sadly a lot of movies just fly under these people's radars because they're just not the movies that everyone's talking about and whenever film critics do make a video talking about underrated movies it's always the same movies over and over again and also what film critics because like it depends on the film critics like like red letter media and 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 most of the people i watch like yms uh, most of the other like film reviewer people that i watch None of them are really particularly big fans of Godzilla movies, but if I want to look up something about a Godzilla movie, there's channels that do talk about them, and if, like, you know, I want to see if fucking good, if I want to see reviews about, like, I don't know, Shin Godzilla or whatever, like, some, some movies just aren't, uh, don't appeal to everybody, you know, like... I'm not upset that YMS or whoever isn't talking about the new Bollywood picture that came out because it's like, yeah, that's just not the kind of thing they tend to watch. Drive, so? Nightcrawler, Synodoki, New York. And while all of these- Synodoki, New York. Can we just, can we just send Adam a clip of him saying Synodoki, New York and, and just be done with this now? These are great Drive. Nightcrawler, Synodoki, New York. And while all of these are great movies, if everyone's calling them underrated, are they really underrated? Sure, Martin Scorsese is an amazing director, but how come whenever he comes out with a new movie, it's always in everybody's end of the year lists? Same thing with Wes Anderson or Quentin Tarantino. Yes, Wolf of Wall Street was- I, This guy is so hipster that he doesn't even like the hipster film directors that other hipsters like. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, before the end of this video, he's probably gonna lay on us some fucking in, uh, some opinions about, about cuties. Oh wait, this came out before cuties. We gotta check his channel to see what he has to say about cuties, if anything. It was an amazing film, but I don't think it was anywhere Sinodoki, close to being that's one right, of my Chad. favorite films of that year. Mostly because I have really oddball tastes. And I feel like if more mm -hmm. film critics on YouTube were being- you know, I have really oddball tastes too, you know? Nothing makes me happier some nights than just going onto the Criterion website and finding some random old, like, film noir Japanese movie from the fucking 60s about a- about a man with a puffy face who likes to fuck rice. Uh, you know, sometimes I- I'm really into weird shit like that. What does that have to do with anything?! <laughs> A lot of film, a lot of film critics are into weird shit too, like that. What is your point? Genuine, rather than just agreeing with the majority opinion, I feel like you would see more of their oddball tastes shine through in their reviews, rather than just hearing them regurgitate the same shit over and over again. Now, while it may seem like I'm being harsh here, I don't feel like a lot of movie critics do this for the sake of fitting in. I think it's mostly done because people like Scorsese and Tarantino have been in the industry for over 20 years. I mean, that's longer than a lot of these movie critics have been alive. And Scorsese and Tarantino have very unique styles that have had a lot of impact on filmmaking as a whole. And a lot of new directors take Guys, a lot of inspiration. Guys, it's not that you actually like this movie that Scorsese made. It's that your stupid, feeble, sheep-like brain is programmed to think that it's good. Why can't they all watch Woody Woodpecker like true patricians? Inspiration from them. So much so that techniques that were once seen as unique to these directors yes, I are am now a the industry standard when you. it comes to making movies. 
What I believe happened is that a lot of these film critics grew up watching movies by Scorsese or Tarantino or Spielberg or Wes Anderson. And so as they got older, the things that they look for in movies are things that remind them of those directors, which just so happen to be the things that are included in a lot of Academy Award winning. Yeah, right. And that's why YMS constantly talks about how his top, his favorite director of all time is Michael Haneke or Hanukkah or however you pronounce his name. Some guy who most most people in chat now have probably not heard of, who makes, like, weirdo European movies where everybody's miserable. Yeah, you know, the the hot, the, the highly well-known fucking, oh, Jesus. Movies, because a lot I mean, of- I'm only using YMS as an example here, because that's who he used as an example in the last video. If I had to talk about, like, I don't know, again, like, Red Letter Media or something, I don't even think they particularly liked- you know, like, they didn't even talk about the Irishman or whatever the fuck. Like, oftentimes a big new movie will come out and they'll talk, like, about it in their end of the year thing or whatever. Or they'll make a joke about, like, hey, do you want to go see Dunkirk? No. Hey, do you want to go see other, like, highly acclaimed movie? No. Or what did you think of this movie? Eh, it was okay. You know, that kind of thing. It's like... No, not, I don't know what, like, he's just making points that are completely wrong, and I don't, I don't know, maybe this man's just learning, th like, what life as a human is like, and this is all just really confusing to him, and we just have to give him some time. People in the Academy grew up with those films as well, and a lot of the filmmakers that make those Also, 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 did he say, what like, they look for in a lot of these film critics grew up watching movies by Scorsese or Tarantino or Spielberg. Oh, or... uh, yes, yeah, Spielberg, the guy who everybody now agrees makes great movies all the time. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I don't watch a single film, a single YouTube film critic person who doesn't have some serious complaints about Steven Spielberg and the way he does movies now. Like, like, the best that I've heard about Steven Spielberg in the last few years, from the people that I watch, anyway, are, is like, uh, yeah, I mean, he knows how to make a movie, it's just, they're, they're always kind of the same movie. Uh, Bridge of Spies, what a fucking thrilling masterpiece that was. And then he comes along and he makes, like, Ready Player One, and now fucking Ernest Cline is, like, his ward is like the Robin to his Batman. Like, yeah, no, not a lot of, not a, not a super great amount of respect still going on for, for your boy. I mean, I guess respect, but like, what? Like, he's he's saying, oh yeah, these critics they just hold up Scorsese, uh, Spielberg, and all these people. No, no. Wes Anderson. Just no. And so as they got older, the things that they look for in movies are things that remind them of those directors. Once again, yeah, just like Michael Haneke, yeah, the or or Bong Joon Ho, or any of those other directors who are just exactly like Steven Spielberg, yeah. Yeah, you know, I really enjoyed that part in Old Boy when the when when the old boy phoned home. Which just so happened to be the things that are included in a lot of Academy Award winning movies because a lot of the people in the Academy grew up with those films as well. And a lot of the filmmakers that make those movies were inspired by the people that worked on those classic films as well. Whether it be in the storytelling, in the visual style, or even in the casting choices. And while you may not notice these things while you're watching the movie, your brain your sir brain did. Certainly does. Okay, and the re that was a good meme. I gotta give him that. That was, that was a good meme. A little bit of a clap for that meme. I saw it, saw it coming. But it was a good meme. The reason why you see a lot of the same types of movies getting all the praise from critics is because a lot of critics just haven't evolved past their love for the filmmaking standards that they grew up with. And that's their thing to come to terms with, and I have no say so in is that. This, like, chat, what do we think the odds are that this whole video is just him being like... That this whole video is just him like, uh... Well, you know, I really liked The Last Jedi, and fuck you all for being mean. The Last Jedi is really good. You guys are just mean. Oh, wait, that's, uh... <laughs> That's that other hack. Because I already broadened my taste just by going to lots of different film festivals. But ultimately, what I fear is that as time goes on and the market becomes more saturated and we have more different types of movies coming out, 
that these old qualities sticking around in the public's eye will eventually cloud out the ability for new things to come to the forefront and set a new standard fuck? of filmmaking genius. Uh, entirely not true. Again, if you ever watch any of the fucking critics that he alone has, has used as examples, usually what they want is original shit done well. They're not looking for the same feelings again and again. I, I, I don't know. It's just as simple as that. Like... This, the, watching these videos from this guy is so frustrating because almost everything he says, I'm just like, well, no, da 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 da, you're wrong. And, you know, you know, saying that and knowing that he's wrong doesn't make me feel better. It's like there's such a hollow feeling. <laughs> I'll use Suicide Squad as an example for the millionth time until people start appreciating the movie as much as I do. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Okay. No, no, it's all making so much more sense to me now. Yeah. Okay. No. Cuz I was I did. I was just sitting here and I was like, "Chat, what do you think are the ought now we know?" <laughs> Oh yeah, Suicide Squad, the movie cut by a trailer house. <laughs> the movie that uh the movie that that kept as deleted scenes the entire plot for the movie. Yeah, great great film, great film. Yeah. While I acknowledge that Suicide Squad is not a great film by any stretch of the oh, imagination. No, Suicide no, but we need to appreciate it more cuz what was that? What was that stupid fucking crap from the last video? Uh it 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 requi- it took- uh, it- it took effort to make, though. The budget was big. Or whatever he said. Oh god. Oh, I'm getting- I- I am losing brain cells, chat. As God was I probably one this. of my favorite films of 2016. Oh, was really? A breath of fresh air from the absolutely done-to-death Marvel formula. Oh yeah, oh yeah, chat. Suicide Squad was a real fucking breath of fresh air from the done-to-death Marvel formula. Cannot think of any movie that Suicide Squad reminds me of. Yep, certainly cannot think of any movie starring Star-Lord, Gamora, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, and Drax the Destroyer. Cannot think of any movie that all of those characters were in that is basically just what Suicide Squad did, but better. Yeah, I can't think of anything like that. Really? Now let's imagine for a second that Suicide Squad came out long before the MCU was introduced. It's hard to imagine that people wouldn't respect the film at least a little bit more since I feel like a lot of the negative backlash that that film receives comes from people's insistence on comparing it to the MCU. On an even playing f No... I... Uh, you know, the sad thing is that there is some level of weird rivalry. Chat, I've been making comic book references a lot of the stream. And for those of you who, who haven't been up to date with the, the uh, menial nonsense of my life, I've been really getting into Marvel comics lately. I've been reading old... Uh, I found out about the Marvel Unlimited app, and I've just been reading, like, old spider-mans i started reading 2099 guys if you like cyberpunk and superheroes you got to check out spider-man 2099 but you know i've been getting into that and and uh, i haven't really been reading any dc stuff because uh dc doesn't make their fucking streaming app available in canada so you know go fuck dc i guess but but uh i i've been sitting here like i've been i've also been watching a lot of videos from this guy called uh comic tropes and I've uh, been learning a lot about, like, how comics are made and everything. It's really fascinating stuff to me. And this whole time I've been thinking somewhere in the back of my mind, isn't it weird that there's... Ah, oh, cool voice crack. Isn't it weird that there's always been this, like, weird... This perceived, like, rivalry between DC and Marvel. And it's like, why do people... I don't know, Marvel has cool characters, DC has cool characters, it really comes down to the individual comics. I mean, a lot of the same people worked on shit, like, I'm pretty sure the people that worked on, like, Avengers went on to do the Teen Titans or whatever the fuck. Fucking Frank Miller or whatever, he he made a bunch of shit, like, for both. It, 
and I guess I guess I'm just I'm still a little surprised that there's there is like a level of like like rivalry between DC fans and Marvel fans. It's the dumbest fucking shit. It's even dumber than console wars, honestly. And and so the fact that there is still some level of that and there are still some people who are like, "Well, no, but Marvel movies are bad cuz they're for babies." Uh DC is better cuz it's dark and and it's more it's more serious. Or the flip side of that where people just don't like I don't know. I you know, I can't even I can't even say that cuz I was going to say people just don't like DC movies for whatever reason, but it's like most of the DC EU is terrible. And to get back to this guy's point, mo like most people don't like Suicide Squad cuz it sucks. I mean, I don't know what more to say about it. They 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 don't like Suicide Squad because it sucks cuz it was a shitty cash grab that tried to cash in on basically what guardians of the galaxy did originally to the point where the 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 sequel which might as well be called the suicide squad colon we're sorry is just being made by james gunn so what are the what the fuck is this idiot's point i mean i'm I, i'm really trying not to bully stream here chat but like He's basically saying people didn't like the Suicide Squad because it wasn't, because it was different, for, or because they were comparing it to Marvel movies. And I'm like, yeah, okay, there's a couple people out there who are weirdly territorial about, like, which costumed guy they watch or read or whatever, and that's stupid, but... The, the, most of the movies by the D, in the DCEU are bad! And there's a reason that they're bad, and the reason typically is that they just didn't really care? I mean, the Suicide Squad's a little better in a sense, because at least it almost feels like a cool idea, but then it was ruined by the studio. So, you know, I mean, it almost, it could have been something. I'm sure the guy, what was it, David Ayer or whatever, I'm sure the guy who made it, Probably had some interesting ideas, but then the fucking studio decided, no, we're gonna just turn this movie into bootleg Guardians featuring Harley Quinn. And I'm just, I'm just fascinated by this. Like, I, I knew it was gonna be a movie. I knew all of this had to stem from him being mad at, at like, a all the critics, because they all shit on that one movie that he liked. I figured it was going to be Star Wars. Safe bet, honestly. It's usually Star Wars with these fucking nerds. But but no, it was it was a movie most people, even Suicide Squad fans, consider like, yeah, it really is a shame that movie turned out like it did. This is the hill you're dying on, dude. Are you kidding? Field, we're being like Marvel. I'm sorry for the. I'm sorry for the long break. Let's let's take a little. Let's let's go back a little to see the context of why I had to stop everything. I, I'll I'll try to not go on twenty minute rants, but holy shit. It's hard to imagine. Holy that shit. Respect the film at least a little bit more, since I feel like a lot of the negative backlash that that film receives comes from people's insistence on comparing it to the MCU. Yeah, and maybe the reason they do that is because it's such a fucking direct ripoff of Guardians of the Galaxy that the most, the closest thing you can compare it to is, oh yeah, that other movie that basically they they stole from. Yeah, there's a reason people are comparing the two. On an even playing field, where being like Marvel, or being like Scorsese, or being like Spielberg wasn't the golden standard for what was considered a good movie, could Suicide Squad have been to DC what Avengers was to Marvel? No. I feel like there's this guideline that is in- No, it definitely could not have been, because again, Avengers for Marvel was a movie that was led up to by like four films or something. I mean, even if you want to- even if you don't want to count fucking the, the Hulk movie, it at least had like three movies before it, counting Iron Man 2, which kind of sucks as a movie, but at least it, it did establish things about the uh, Avengers. And uh, they just try... The, another reason why everybody hates, like, the DCEU is because they just tried to force everything. No, the Suicide Squad couldn't have been what the Avengers was 
for DC because that wasn't even the point. They were ripping off Guardians. The one that was supposed to be the Avengers was the Justice League, which had like fucking generously one movie before it. I, I, I guess two. Man of Steel has, like, basically nothing to do with anything that came after it, but whatever. Because they just made Man of Steel as one shitty bad movie. And then they decided, wait, why don't we try to tie this shitty movie to other shitty movies? And then we wound up with fucking big business guys in suits being like, Ah, oh, yeah, see? The new Guardian film. Yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, why don't we try to do that? What do we- what do we got? What do we got that can compete with Guardians? Well, what do we got? Ah, Suicide Squad! Give us a film about a- about- about the clown lady with a bat! We're gonna make the Joker appeal to the youths! Ah, oh, it's gonna be great! Like, no, there's a lot of reasons people didn't like this movie. Get off your fucking- Courage by films that are considered to be great, and that iterating on them is such a surefire way of creating the next great film that we don't then go out and try to create something totally different. Something totally different, like the movie that explicitly just rips off Guardians of the Galaxy to the point where, again, its sequel is being directed by the guy who made Guardians of the Galaxy. Please continue. That could very well set the new golden standard for filmmaking because it's proven that critics just won't respond to it as well. A lot of movie critics, especially the ones here on YouTube, will outline certain elements of a movie that they really like, such as good story, good characters, and scenes that convey strong emotion, and then say that these elements are what makes a movie good, as in all good movies have these elements. Now going to be fair, I do kind of I do kind of agree with the point I think he's starting to make here. Oftentimes uh film critics will will kind of look at things and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, you know, all movies have to have this or that." And I feel like that's wrong. Uh I've seen movies with basically paper thin plot, but they've got good characters or whatever and you know, that carries it along. I've seen movies with basically paper-thin plot and shitty characters, but they've got really interesting, unique visuals, and that carries it through. Uh, and so, I mean, yeah, to, to be fair, uh, another, one more point, if, was there even one point before? I think I, I think I praised him for a good Plinket meme, but that was it. Uh, but one more point in this guy's favor, I guess, is just that, yeah... Critics could be, could stand to be a little less like, like there's, we don't need a you must be this tall to ride this ride kind of sign when it comes to movies. It, a lot of, any movie can be made good by any number of things in the movie. It doesn't necess necessarily need to follow a specific guideline. But I think what those critics tend to be going for when they say like, oh, you know, this you know that every good movie has to have this they're not really saying every good movie they're saying this is sort of the guideline it's kind of like the the hero's journey or the mono myth or whatever where it's like yeah not every hero has to have the same like path as luke skywalker or something but that's kind of the the typical one and you know you can expect to see some variation of that so I guess that's kind of the thing. I'll, generously, I'll, I'll give him half a point here. Going back to Suicide Squad again, I can understand why some people don't like Suicide Squad, but what I can't understand- The acting is bad, the plot's not there, the visuals are shitty, the music just keeps changing every two seconds because licensed music is cool and will draw in the kids. Half the movie is just fucking chopped to bits by the fucking trailer, literally trailer house that edited the film for release. Uh, yeah, no, there's lots of mo there's lots of reasons why people might dislike that film. Stan is when people try to say that Suicide Squad is bad because it doesn't have these elements, because it doesn't have the elements that a good movie is supposed to have. No, at this point, we're just splitting hairs. Like, yeah, the movie sucked. It might not have been for this and this reason. It might have been for this and this and that reason. But it was still a shit movie. What the fuck? Now, if your argument was that you felt like Suicide Squad needed these elements and didn't have them, that's perfectly fine. This is splitting. To this say is that this is really splitting hairs. This is like the most fucking pedantic like oh you didn't phrase it right here's my two videos about you 
any film that doesn't have these elements is automatically a bad movie is a bit strange considering all the different ways that a movie can be good. As soon as you start prescribing elements to a film and saying that this is what it takes for a movie to be good, proximity to films that were praised in the years before, then you're going to start to see the industry become very sloppy and samey. And if you are saying that all of these elements need to be included in order for a film to suit your tastes, then you have to acknowledge that your tastes are ultimately bad for the industry. Uh, and you who really liked Suicide Squad, you're the one, you're the one we should be listening to, right? Um, so I guess the point that he's making is he saw some reviews of Suicide Squad that were like, oh, there's plot holes and this and that. And, you know, most movies don't have these problems. And then they'd compare them to other movies that don't have those problems. And he's like, well, no, but movies are evolving. What do you mean? Or, or something. I'm guessing that's his point. It's a pretty bad one, but... If too many I people mean... are unwilling to expand their tastes, then we're never going to see evolution in this industry. If you try to hold every uh, film to its proximity to another film that you love, then nothing new is ever going to get through to you. And the more that people do this, the more that people like me, who like to make and watch really bizarre content, start to suffer. You the know, most I'm going to be real. I, uh, I thought I, I was starting to understand him a little bit more. Uh, I, I, I thought I was starting to understand him a little bit more when he was like, oh, I like really weird things. And I think he's uh full of shit actually because i i was thinking oh yeah you know i like some weird stuff too but then he was like no but i like suicide squad though and I, now i'm just like no okay you're just a hipster uh i mean you're just a hip like yeah there's a lot of movies out there that don't necessarily follow the same rules as et or whatever but i mean those at least don't have the same problems that like suicide squad had I, I mean again to use the to use an example of like branded to kill the very strange 60s noir japanese film from seijun suzuki starring a guy who has a fetish for rice uh trying to work his way up through the ranks of like a, a numbered list of assassins it's basically the plot of no more heroes uh, honestly i mean that's basically what it is but uh yeah it's like it's a weird movie with a bizarre plot it doesn't have a traditional structure like it doesn't have a traditional act one act two act three structure a large chunk of the movie is set with this main character handcuffed to the number one assassin so that neither of them can kill each other and they have to like coordinate to take a piss at one point it's a bizarre film and you can't compare like you can't compare suicide squad to that because that movie obviously has completely different things that make it interesting and good but again like at least it has those things <laughs> Oh my god, am I really responding this seriously to some guy who's just- But I liked Suicide Squad! You guys are just mean! Those movie critics are- Okay, alright! Expanding their taste shows how little they actually care about advancing the medium. Just like how their ignorance in the filmmaking process and their refusal to inform themselves on how that process works shows how little they care about actually advancing the industry rather than just making fun of it for the sake of entertainment. If enough movies aren't being... I mean, okay, some people really do like to make fun of it for the sake of entertainment, though. What's wrong with that? Why is that a problem? I don't know how many people are seriously looking... I mean, I made the point before that, like, it's fun to look at, you know, like, the Search for the Worst videos by IAG. It's fun to look at those as an example of, like, oh, yeah, maybe don't use this shot. Maybe don't write your characters like this. Maybe don't blah, 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 blah. But they're not really serious film critique, and usually, usually videos that are, I mean, you can tell if a video is just sort of there for like, hey, you know, we're making fun of some bad, like, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons movie or some shit. Like, you know, we're not really seriously looking at that. We're not deconstructing it. We, we don't need a fucking, you know, 
We don't we don't need a, a video essay about it, but we're just having fun. But again, apparently that's just not allowed. Police that are to your taste, then all you're gonna do is talk about how lame it is that most movies don't suit your taste. God forbid you go out and actually make your own movie and work towards improving the medium. Oh yeah, fuck being the change that you want to see in the industry. Oh, we're getting and sassy. And while you're at it, fuck expanding your taste so that way you're actually able to- Okay, except again, you criticized the, the films that Ralph the Movie Maker made because you didn't like them particularly. The goalposts change so rapidly for this guy where he's like, Uh, yeah, you guys don't even know because you don't make movies. Uh, except for you, but your movie doesn't count because I don't like it. Uh. To appreciate more movies than what you're used to. While I understand where this mentality comes from, I feel like more people should acknowledge that the barrier of taste is a lot more difficult to get around than some would like to admit. And that a movie shouldn't be considered bad just because it doesn't have the same elements as a film that suits the tastes of the general public. The message that I want you to take from this video is to go out and try to expand your taste. Try to appreciate more movies than what you currently do. And right. if you're just someone that's not interested in doing that, then just don't talk about movies on the internet. Because if you do, oh, I'll okay. make fun of you. I'll make uh, yeah, we wouldn't want that. fun of you and your shitty taste. Just watch me. Oh uh, yeah, we really wouldn't want that. Please, please do. Please make fun of me. You know, this is an open letter to Neo Jesus here. Please make fun of my tastes because I I do love uh I I really love looking at his videos on stream. Let, let's see what else we got here. Do we got anything else here? Anything else good? Oh yeah, more more bad reviews of the Ralph the Movie Maker shit. Again, remember he doesn't count as a critic because he's never made movies, except that he has. I think he, uh, you know, chat. He's got this big wrong under Ralph. King cringe. Loser. I think this man really just doesn't like Ralph the movie maker. I think that's, I think that's it, honestly. Uh, and we got like a thing making fun of Quentin here. That's fair. But I think he is just mad that Ralph didn't like a movie that he likes, and so now he has to make these crazy rambling films, or rambling reviews about nothing. Oh god. I don't even want to watch any of his other videos. They all look miserable. You know what, maybe, let's watch, you know what, actually, let's watch the Star Wars sequel trilogy, a retrospective. Let's watch this, because I'm sure this will be great. This one will be fucking, this will be one for the ages. You know, it occurs to me that we're nearly two hours into the stream, and I have not actually looked at a bad review of something yet in the stream. So let's rectify that. I can already see the like-to-dislike ratio is good on this one. Let's, uh, let's see what he has to say about the famed, fabulous sequel trilogy. And yes, chat, this video is only eight minutes, but I can assure you I could probably stretch the re the, this next eight minutes into an hour. Just watch me. <laughs> so, here we are, guys, ending the decade with the final film of a trilogy that never had a chance of living up to the hype that surrounded it for almost a decade, just like how we started the decade with the final film in a trilogy that never had a chance of living up to the hype that was built around it for almost a decade. Yeah, except for the fact that, I mean, it didn't... Sure, it didn't live up to the hype, but it kind of set its own expectations for hype. It wasn't really the fans' fault that they got excited that Disney just kept fucking showing them shit and being like, Oh, this is gonna be in it. Oh, yeah! Disney wanted hype. That's all they wanted. Of course, of course it was overhyped. Yeah. That's not the reason they were bad. And they say that corporate filmmaking and billion dollar franchises aren't consuming the film industry. Thank God the indie film scene still has a fuckload of creativity, otherwise this entire art form would seem like just as much of a joke as the world of high art. This banana duct taped to a wall. Anyway, hi, my name's Neo, and I'm a filmmaker, and here we are approaching the year 2020 and still making sequels to a trilogy that came out over 40 years ago, even though pretty much everyone is in agreement that nothing will ever surpass the original and there's basically no point in continuing to oh my god bad opinion number one i don't even know if this is number one i think i already made fun of one of his bad opinions already but bat there's another one 
Uh, no, people, again, people aren't mad at the fucking sequel trilogy for, oh, they didn't surpass the original. Most people are upset with the sequel trilogy because they set up a bunch of things that could have made for a really interesting story that probably could have surpassed the original. The original had a lot, the original trilogy had a lot of fucking problems, not the least of which being Luke and Leia fucking, or at least kissing. But, you know, the sequel, with a little bit of planning, if Disney had actually planned something for the fucking sequel, they could have made something a little better. They had, uh, they had, uh, what's his name? Finn, who was like an escaped stormtrooper. Ah, oh, we really almost had something there. You could have had the, him leading an uprising of stormtroopers or something, yada, yada, yada. Could have even tied it to some kind of fucking slave commentary, whatever. But you just didn't do any of that, and by the end of literally, like, the first movie, he's just killing people, like, going, Woo! And it's, like, all just a fun fucking game. The, pe the reason people are upset about the sequel trilogy isn't just because, oh, it couldn't have lived up to the original. It's that it could have. It honestly could have. It really isn't that hard to make something that's better than the original Star Wars trilogy. As good as the second and first movie might be. Maybe the third one. If you're high. But as good as as good as as fun as the original trilogy might have been, it wouldn't have been that difficult to make something better. And they laid the groundwork for something better, and then they completely fucking botched it. That's why people are upset. Make any more of these movies, and yet we still keep paying to see them over and over again. And now we're forced to deal with these godforsaken films from now until the end of time. Congratulations, everybody. This shit is your fault. I've said before that Star Wars should have just ended once Lucas called it quits because without him and his eye for innovation, the series just doesn't really have much of a reason to continue from a filmmaking standpoint. But hey, I'm not going to talk shit about him selling the franchise to Disney because he made bank because of it, and that's a move that anybody should be able to respect. Now, is he going to bring up the fact that Lucas probably sold Star Wars to Disney specifically because of the Red Letter Media videos? Because that would be really funny. Because, uh... I mean, for those of you who don't know, it was pretty shortly after Plankett stopped making those videos and finished the series on the, the prequel trilogy. It was pretty quick after that was done that George Lucas was like, yeah, I'm selling Star Wars to Disney because I'm sick of being bullied by internet people. And that was, like, legitimately his reason for it. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what other internet people, you know... Uh, prominently made fun of them but i mean i i don't know that's that's an interesting thing to think about if we didn't have if we didn't have mr plinkett shitting on uh the the force awake or the, the phantom menace or whatever we probably wouldn't have disney star wars now possibly i don't know we might have something worse i'm not gonna talk shit on disney either like the millions of star wars fanboys online have because i feel like they pretty much accomplished what they set out to do which was make money and they did a fuckload of it to be exact, but all at the sacrifice of creativity and innovation. And this latest film in the series is no exception. This third film, like the two that came before it, were pretty much just your average American popcorn films. Thematically basic, but with a storyline that's easy enough for younger people that aren't as familiar with the franchise to get into, with great performances, intense action sequences, and a nice happy ending that leaves the audience feeling sweet and satisfied. And I wouldn't expect anything different. After all, you can't really take big risk when you're playing with a billion dollar audience. Well, I mean, you can, but- I love this. I, you know, I, how did I, how did I just know that his take on this was gonna be, Oh, but it's actually not that bad, though. Yeah, it's Disney. Come on, they know better. If you're going into this expecting some grand epic finale that ties up all the loose ends and successfully draws the Star Wars cinematic universe to a close, then you're gonna wind up being disappointed. And I feel like that's kind of what happened to this new trilogy as a whole. The same thing with the prequels. People just go into these films expecting way too much, whether it be expecting the new films to recreate the same- Because way too much was promised to them. You know, again, people wouldn't have even compared it that much to the original if they didn't specifically remake the first movie, basically in The Force Awakens, and then they established the idea of, oh, this is going to be a continuation and a, like, conclusion to this story. Okay, let's judge it as that. They wouldn't have done it if it was like, oh, this is set 40, 400 years in the future of Star Wars, and it's a whole different new story. 
and it has all these different new elements, people wouldn't have been able to judge it on the level of the, the, the original trilogy because it wasn't specifically calling attention to that. Again, that's literally only Disney's fault. When you start announcing, oh yeah, guys, the villain from the original trilogy is back, people aren't really out here like, oh yeah, well, you know, I hope this is a good story on its own right. No, it's, I, they better fucking finish this saga well. They better tie up the this story. This is the end of a story now, so that's what people are, oh god. Feeling as the old films, or whether it be people expecting the new characters to be just as well written as the old ones. Despite that's right, chat member. The Thrawn trilogy is the true sequel trilogy, and it'll be cool to see Disney try to crawl their way back into that happening. Man, that'll be fun. We'll get the secret extra t t sequel trilogy that happens between the original and the current sequel trilogy, and that'll be the Thrawn trilogy. And that all just happened off screen and nobody mentioned it in the, in the current sequel trilogy. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. And they're going to have a CGI Luke and Leia there. It's going to be great. 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 The fact that these films are now being written by completely different people. This is where a lot of the criticisms of Rey being a Mary Sue come from, or complaining about the drastic change in Luke's character. And while I do agree that Rey is a Mary Sue... Well, thank God we can at least agree on that. I mean, so? Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes her unrealistic as a character, but this is Star Wars, since when does realism matter? Hermione Granger was a Mary Sue too. She was smart, pretty, heroic, and had next to no character flaws, but everyone still loved. She also wasn't the main character of that trilogy. Her. As far as trip series. people criticizing Ryan Johnson for what he did to Luke Skywalker, I guarantee you that Brian Johnson had almost no say in the way that Disney wanted Luke to be portrayed throughout these films. Yeah, I'm sure Brian Johnson had no say in it because he was busy leading the Beach Boys. Disney had a plan for Luke before Brian Johnson even signed the fucking check. I mean, everyone was complaining about how Luke is like this bitter old man now and how the Luke Skywalker that we know would never be so callous and neglectful to his responsibilities as a- Now, that's a whole argument you can have. I'm not out here about to, like, debate Star Wars takes with you people. Uh, personally, I, uh, I think that the, the Last Jedi was a bit of a misfire, but honestly, I get the idea, and I think it was coming from a decent place, uh... Basically, the, the concept of that movie was on a meta level. Yeah, let's try to move away from the past. Let's kill the past and and move away from ATSTs and Darth Vader. Let's try to forge a new thing. And then Disney wasn't having any of that. But also, that movie just wasn't very good in its own right. So, I mean, criticisms are still valid. Uh, but... Uh, my... My biggest issue, and I think, again, a lot of people's biggest issue with the sequel trilogy was that it, 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 was, it wasn't just George Lucas making it up as he went along. It was Disney, with all of the fucking resources in the world, making it up as they went along. <laughs> And all they needed to do was sit a couple interns down for a couple hours one night. And they would have had a better plan for a sequel trilogy than what actually wound up happening. And it, it seems to me that either they had no plan or they just wandered so far the fuck off plan that, that they might as well not have. Uh, you might say that they decided to abandon whatever good they might have had, whatever good plan they might have had because, you know, we need to focus group this and oh this needs to appeal to these people and blah 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 and you know after a certain point your plan's fucked because you needed to you know do that do all that that's probably part of what happened too but i will say that i mean for the most part the the biggest problem i have is just that they seem to have made a first movie and then the second movie was made by like a completely different fucking team of people who did a completely different story, and then the third movie, like, basically awkwardly tried to undo the second one, and it was just a mess. And frankly, it's, to me, it's unforgivable that a company as large as Disney is able to make a mistake that colossal with the, their biggest fucking property. It's, it's a joke. 
You might expect that out of something like a, a, tr a Terminator sequel or whatever. But, I mean, again, Disney has all the money to make sure that this doesn't happen. They could have hired the top storyteller talents, uh, the best writers, the best director. They could have got fucking Scorsese to do this. Or some other director that isn't overrated garbage, according to this guy, whatever. But, you know, they could have got all of the best people and they just wound up making shit. The only thing they wound up doing right was, like, the actors and that's it. Because somehow those actors managed to carry the awful dialogue and the terrible characters that they're playing. But, yeah, I mean, he's, again, he's complaining about how, like, oh, you know, this and that. People are mad about this element or that, and it's like, no, the biggest problem with this is they had no fu fucking plan, and if they did, they threw it out fast. Legendary Jedi, but, I mean, why? Literally, the events of the first films took place over 40 years ago. You don't think that maybe Luke changed his mind and maybe reevaluated some shit during that long-ass period of time? No, but I think they probably could have shown what happened a lot better. Or maybe just made that the sequel trilogy, for that matter. Like, honestly, uh, honestly, Luke fucking trying to train Kylo Ren and then failing miserably seems way more interesting to me than fucking whatever, Palpatine's granddaughter or whatever. Well, whatever the fuck happened in this trilogy, nothing. At least they gave us a bit of a backstory as to why he's so bitter and indifferent now. They could have just left us in the dark and been like, oh yeah, Luke is just this bitter old guy now that lives on an island and drinks blue milk out of an alien cow tit. Not only that, but they actually draw Luke's story to a pretty successful close in this most recent film, and that literally it wouldn't have worked if they had changed anything about his depiction in the previous film. Now, this isn't to say that the movie is- What are you talking about? The, the- the- Oh, God. The Last Jedi made him out to be a certain way. And then the fucking se sequel to it basically just- Just turned that on its face and, like, he- Mark Hamill looked into the camera and said, And fuck you personally, Ryan Johnson. And then they continued the scene. Like, no, it wasn't a- It wasn't a character arc or something. It was literally just, oh boy, people sure didn't like that last one. Let's make sure they like this one, gang. Flawless, obviously there are some critical things that can be said about the film. You could say that putting Palpatine back into the mix was shoehorning, especially since they never really explained why he's alive in the first place. Oh no, they do in Fortnite. Dead? I would like you to be as well. <laughs> I guess we're supposed to assume that because he's so powerful, he's basically become immortal at this point, but yeah, he just kind of shows up out of nowhere, and they really only question it for like half a second before just being like, well, I guess we gotta defeat him now. And this isn't a small criticism when you're literally saying that the, 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 the end of this whole trilogy and the thing it's all been building up to is a random surprise returning villain. Like, uh-oh, the vulture broke out of prison and Spidey's gotta go fight him. Like, what the fuck? This isn't the- Oh, and he, he frames this whole thing like, well, what did you expect? It's like, yeah, no, I didn't- I genuinely, I didn't expect that they would just bring back the old guy when they set up like three different villains in the first two movies. I really wasn't expecting that. I don't I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Not to mention that if the villain's only purpose in this story is to restore power to the old villain from the previous stories, that's usually a sign that you should, like, write a better villain. I don't know, maybe do something with that Snoke guy since he was such- They actually did write an interesting villain. Well, no, they didn't write him, but they set up the, the possibility for Kylo Ren to sure be interesting. But then Disney realized that the, the kids- you know, it didn't pull well with the young demographics to have Kylo be a bad guy, so they had to make him hastily become good again, and they had nobody else to, to be evil, so, I mean, like... <sighs> Such a useless nothing burger of a character. You could also argue that Chewie's fake-out death scene was just kind of a pointless fake-out that didn't even last long enough for it to be an actual fake-out. You could say that Rey's relation to Palpatine is kind of pointless and has no bearing on her motives as a character. Yeah, you could say these things. You could also point out, like, so fucking so much more. Like, to his credit, you can't say he's really nitpicking. He is bringing out- he's pointing out the most obvious things. 
But like, as I watch this footage, I'm just reminded of, oh yeah, remember the, the fucking stupid part where there's just like a 700 billion fucking Star Destroyers that show up? And they're just, like, inexplicably all fully staffed by people. Remember that part? Remember the part where they go to the fucking Burning Man planet for no reason? And then they just happen to stumble into a fucking quicksand pit for no reason? That just accidentally leads them to the thing they were looking for for no reason? I'm not exaggerating when I say everything about that last movie is kind of shit. There's basically nothing in The Rise of Skywalker that actually worked. Uh, the more I think about it, like, every single scene in that movie, if you think about it for more than a couple seconds, you're like, oh, oh yeah, that's really stupid. Oh. And when I went to see the movie... I actually walked out of the theater being like, yeah, you know, Rise of Skywalker was okay. It was like a 6 out of 10. Because I was expecting something on par with, like, Attack of the Clones. But it's actually kind of worse, honestly. Because <laughs> it's like a boring kind of shitty. It's like it washes over you. It's also mind-numbing. Attack of the Clones is at least like, oh yeah, these backgrounds sure look dumb. Everything looks like a PS2 game. Why is Yoda bouncing off the fucking walls? But in this movie, it was just like, I, I just went in there and it was like brainwash. You could say that Ray and Ben's relationship, if you can even call it that, is really out of nowhere and also pointless. You could say a lot of things, really. It actually really wasn't out of nowhere. They do kind of set that up. And boy, would it have ever been more interesting if they actually did do a thing where the bad guy and the good guy wind up in love at the end and they have to like... I don't know, tragically fight despite their love for each other or something. Boy, that sure would have been cool. Boy, there sure are a lot of cool things that could have happened in the sequel trilogy and they didn't do any of them. But in the end, why would you? The bottom line is... I love this just fucking pointless teenage nihilist bullshit in every one of this guy's videos. Just like, oh, it's your fault. Oh, why would you expect any different? Oh, why would you? Oh, oh, nothing really matters. I'm a little bitch. Star Wars is nothing a Nothing really movie. matters. A really big, really expensive, really well done kids movie. Yeah, it is now. It didn't need to be. That's the point. Disney is trying to capitalize on marketing this series that is as old as dirt to a younger generation, and kids don't really care about how faithful Luke's adaptation is to the original series, or how dynamic of a character Rey is. No, but if you... Uh, this idiot complained... This idiot complained in the last fucking video about how, oh, you film critics on the internet are, are making movies worse by criticizing them blah 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 you're ruining the industry no you know who's ruining the industry this kind of fucking complacency oh who cares it's just for kids yeah oh it's just for kids it doesn't matter that the original trilogy was just infinitely better than this not perfect far from it but infinitely better than this piece of shit and kids grew up with that no, it's fine, though. The, the kids are stupid. It's fine that the overall quality of kids' entertainment has fucking worsened dr drastically in the last just ten years alone. No, bro, it's fine. It's just for kids. Uh, it doesn't matter that when I grew up, kids were watching things like The Iron Giant. Nah, it's just for kids. Kids just watch shit on YouTube Kids and... Fucking Frozen Elsa Cummies Spider-Man videos on YouTube. It's fine. It's just for kids. That's the complacency. That's the shit that's ruining fucking the industry. You want to talk about somebody, some critic who's, whose stupid mindset is ruining things. No, don't strive for garbage. Strive for excellence. Be upset that this movie that is ostensibly for kids, maybe is not very fucking good because kids deserve better. When I grew up, I watched The Incredibles and you know what's great about The Incredibles? Everything. That movie is fucking amazing and it still holds up now when I'm like 26 years old because it's a, just a good movie and it doesn't matter that it's for kids. Oh god, this kind of shit pisses me off so much. It's the same as when people complain that YMS like, oh, you, you were too hard on that movie for kids. It's like, no. 
Kids movies should be good, too. We shouldn't just give them a pass because it's just for kids. The best kids movies are the ones that are great for adults, too, and have, like, dimensions. They speak to multiple generations. God damn or how realistic Ben and Ray's relationship is. These films are here to be entertaining to as many people as possible, and they do a pretty good job at that. Now, I'm not saying that since it's made for kids, the quality doesn't matter, because to a certain really? degree, kids need to be at least infatuated enough to want to go and see the next one and to want their parents to buy merchandise. Oh, that's bullshit. No, kids are stupid enough that they can just be marketed to and have some colorful visuals on the screen, and they'll just like it. That's the problem. Kids are stupid enough that that's fine for them, but it doesn't need to be. It's the responsibility of the parents and Disney, to an extent, to not let kids see just trash like this. It's the responsibility of parents to give their kids, like, good shit to watch. And now parents will see Star Wars and they'll just be like, Oh yeah, well, I like the Star Wars movies I saw as a kid. Because those movies were actually fucking good! And they'll just show them these fucking trash heaps and the kids are just conditioned to like them because they've got pretty visuals and because they see fucking Ray everywhere they go on like merch, Kylo Ren toilet paper or whatever. It's like, <sighs> every point he's making is so backwards. What not. But at the end of the day, before you make your 20 minute long video essay about why Ryan Johnson is the worst director ever or how Daisy Ridley is a horrible protagonist or whatever the fuck, just remember what these movies are. A bunch of dumb laser battles in space. And arguing about yeah, the- Yeah, that's what they are. That's not what they needed. That's- they didn't need to be that. That's why people are upset, you fucking troglodyte. Authenticity and motives of these characters makes just about as much sense as arguing over the authenticity of the characters from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Oh, and on top of- Except Diary of a Wimpy Kid is actually a good series that people like that has a lot of merit. I don't know anything about it, but I know that it's a good series that has a lot of shit that people like about it that's actually legitimately well made. Comparing something that's good like that to this fucking corporate abomination is utterly insulting. You should fucking apologize to the guy who made Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And you know, like, it, it's so reductionist, this whole viewpoint, where it's like, oh... Why are you mad that, you know, Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2 is shit? At the end of the day, Spider-Man's just a guy swinging around and, you know, fighting bad guys. Whatever. That's in this movie. It's fine. And it's like, yeah, that certainly is in this movie, except you're ignoring all of the better ones that came out before where they meant more than that and they had better, they had, they had themes and depth. Yeah, nobody's saying that Spider-Man 1 by Sam Raimi is the most, like, in-depth film ever. It's not exactly competing with, you know, The Lighthouse. Although, I really did enjoy Norman Osborn's appearance in that movie. I thought it was a really cool cameo, and I really wasn't expecting that to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was weird, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they still had more merit than fucking the, the sequel trilogy. You know, and it's just, it's the same thing with, with this, where it's like, you can't compare this trash fire from a company to, like, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, a, a passion project by a guy who poured his heart and soul into those books. What a, what a shitty point. That it makes the series really unapproachable to people that have never seen Star Wars, because the hype surrounding Star Wars movies is bigger than the movies themselves. My biggest problem with Star Wars has never been the movies, but literally everything else okay that's not fair okay, look I if agree. you want some loser with too much free time to sit here and give you a long analysis about the star wars cinematic uh, universe and how you don't get to point at quentin and call him a loser with too much free time when you're acting like a loser with too much free time god these three films play into it then you're gonna have to look somewhere else i will always be unnecessarily harsh to the people that put these films on a pedestal in the same way that those same people are unnecessarily harsh to the directors of these films when they fail to live up to their ridiculous standards. It's not a ridiculous standard to expect your fucking trilogy of movies to have a consistent storyline. That is the stupidest part of this video, is this is this idiot's being like, ah, oh, how dare you hold these movies for kids up to the ridiculous, lofty expectation of... 
Telling a consistent narrative with a beginning, middle, and an end. Having a villain that makes sense. Having themes. Having characters with actual character. Yeah, those are just crazy. Nobody can do that. Come on. Come on. What? You're talking about Disney here, guy. It's not like they have all the resources in the world, don't you know? But if you want someone to talk about what these films are like from a filmmaking perspective and what kind of impact they have on the industry as a whole, then who better to listen to than someone that actually makes films? Rather <laughs> who better to listen to than some dipshit on YouTube with 500 subscribers who makes the worst student films you've ever seen? Chat, we're going to take a look at his student film before we move on than just talking about them. Overall, I'd say that the new trilogy is still the weakest of the three, simply because George Lucas's creativity and innovation is solely lacking from these newer films. But as a movie, these films are no more offensively average than your typical Marvel film. Ah, uh, here we go again. Not Yeah, the typical Marvel film. Nothing in comparison to the glorious original concept that was Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, the typical Marvel movie. Yeah, just trash. You know, nothing to compare to Suicide Squad, my favorite movie of 2016. Oh, yeah. Star Wars will never live up to the expectations that have been set by its fan base. But then again, neither did Jurassic World. Neither did The Hobbit. In the age of the internet, it is now easier than ever to let the malformed opinions of people on the internet build up unnecessary- The malformed opinions. This guy sounds like I did when I made a fucking trip code on 4chan and I called myself better than you. And I just derailed a thread about Diddy Kong Racing and I was like, This is a game for children! None of you understand proper high quality adult games for mm, intellectuals such as myself. Man, I honestly felt so bad about that. Those those homies were just out there trying to talk about Diddy Kong racing, and I had to shit up their thread. But God damn it, did it ever feel good at the time? ...necessary hype and praise around certain films just as easily as it is for them to pick apart other films and change how the general public sees them. This video, and to a certain extent my entire channel, is my attempt to combat that. Oh uh, yeah, in defense of George Lucas, another quality video. So, yeah. if you like what you see, then consider subscribing. I'm always writing, shooting, and editing. And you wonder why you have 500 subscribers, yeah. Uh, okay, well, you know, I... I, <laughs> I really want to move along, chat, but he's got a short film here. He's also got In Defense of George Lucas... I don't know, do we want to watch In Defense of George Lucas? I feel like that's gonna be another fun one. <laughs> So people in chat want to see the clerk's review. Uh, this does look like, oh boy, this does look like another fucking hot take. What is, uh, that's another good like ratio. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the movie Clerk, so I don't feel like I'd have much to add to this. But I just, I, wow, his whole take, his whole channel is just filled with the, the worst take. This is legit, like cuties guy territory this is this is the closest thing that i can think of is cuties guy because it's like that's the last time i saw a channel that was this pretentious and just fucking committed to being wrong about everything uh what do we think chat what should we what should we do he needs to stop is he trashing garfield no he's tr i think he's trashing the Quentin Reviews video, which I'm sure is fun, uh, but I am good uh, on that. Uh, Berserker, Citizen Kane. People want to see the student film. I'd like to see some of the George Lucas one, but, you know, maybe I'll watch that on my own time. Maybe we'll even do a part three of the stream, because, again, I've got, like, three other people I want to look at. And at this rate, I'm probably going to get to at least one of them, but... But goddamn, I am infatuated with this man's terrible opinions. My name is Veronica, but most people call me Vicky. I've been- So, chat, uh, let's, you know, once again, this is his short film. Uh, and this is what he's holding up as the example of how, uh, skilled he is as a filmmaker. While you other plebs have to- have to, uh, have to stand off one side, honestly, while this man- uh, shows you how it's done. You know, move aside Ralph the Movie Maker, because even though you've made two two student films, 
those don't count because they're bad, and I've decided that that means that I, I, because I don't like them, that they don't count. But also, this guy's student film counts more, so let's watch. My name is Veronica, but most people call me Vicky. I've been a drug dealer for four years now. How I became a drug dealer is actually a proof. Oh, I'm really enjoying the, uh, really enjoying the hiss of the background audio. Sounds like, uh, sounds like my fan in the background there. It's great. Pretty funny story. So in my town, there's this huge as fuck mega church that pretty much everyone goes to. There's this one preacher guy there that spends basically every fucking service giving long speeches about how you can improve your life by accepting God into your heart and all that other bullshit. Ooh, Turns out, bullshit. he was coked out of his mind. I had a summer job driving the church van to deliver supplies that they needed before each service. Oh, I'm really enjoying this gimp fucking font that they added here. Just default gimp font. You know, again, that you're calling this a short film. I don't know, I guess this counts as a short film. But to me, I mean, maybe I'm spoiled by watching better YouTube videos than anything you've made. Honestly, even Ralph the Movie Maker's fucking, like, skits where he imitates scenes from, uh, from Mr. Robot or whatever. They wind up, they, they come across a little more professional than this. And that's when I found the enormous amount of fucking coke that they had been hiding in the back of the van. I mean, they must have brought in four pounds of angel dust every service. Why it was are we looking at Ant-Man? Fucking crazy. I figured Wonder that- I if you can use Ant-Man in this context. I don't think so. Him being so out of it, I'd be able to steal a few handfuls each time and he wouldn't even notice. Eventually, it got to the point where I made more money selling nose candy than I did driving the fucking Bible van. Yeah, so I used to only sell coke, but now I pretty much sell everything. This shit will make you kill your fucking parents. This shit will make you feel like you're floating. I don't know what this shit does. A lot of people look down on drug dealers and say that we're making their city worse and their fucking neighbors- This is not... I don't know, what am I supposed to be feeling? Is it funny? What's the intended emotion here? What's the takeaway? Is it tragic? Is it funny? Is she like a... Is it like a black comedy with our twisted devilish heroine over here? No pun intended. Crackheads, but like, it's all bullshit, really. I like to think of myself as more of a happiness provider. It is my job to make people happy. So with is this like, is this like trying to be like a, an office style mockumentary, I guess, about a dealer? Is, is that what, is that what it is? You know, I gotta tell you, Chad, I, I've been watching the UK office because I too am a giant hipster. I knew when I started watching it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be the asshole who hasn't seen the wildly popular US office that everybody talks about all the time to this day. But I, I have watched the UK one, and uh, yeah, this ain't it. Uh, this is not... Here and I'm go. definitely the most notorious drug dealer in the area. Fuck that other shit. Uh, she's got the, uh, the nostalgia critic gun prop. Wonderful. I mean, I'm pretty well known throughout the area. I know all the best places to sell. Like, I used to sell back out in the alley, but the pig cops started fucking hanging out there too often, so now I deal pig in less cops. obvious places. You no, know, I like to imagine she's literally talking about the pig cops from Duke Nukem that have the shotguns. Like the local Dave and Busters. What did I tell you about dealing in front of the store? Uh, Who said I'm the doing? real... The real star of the show. Again, Chad, I'm not the only one getting a Mr. Girl and his girlfriend vibe from this duo, am I? Like, I'm not the only one, right? Hell yeah, what you want? Also, can we see the cameraman in the door? As a drug dealer, it's your job to serve the people and keep the profits coming. But even most drug dealers have standards. Like, if you're wearing a fucking Zelda shirt, don't even come up to me. The reason I'm so successful is because I didn't grow up watching Star Wars like a fucking incel. I won't sell to anybody uh, that watches anime. Those people are just fucking narcs by default. Maybe uh, if you stop watching Naruto, you get some bitches on your dick. You listen to 21 Pilots? What a fucking faggot. Lord knows, I ain't fucking s Is this satire? What? I don't know, because this sounds like the kind of shit that he would unironically say. Maybe all of his videos are satire. Again, maybe it's a Mr. Girl situation where it's literally just like, oh, I'm... 
I'm I'm on 700 different layers of satire and irony that you just don't get cuz you're just too 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 small-minded or whatever cuz Again, this just sounds like his actual opinions, so I don't know. Somebody with sailor mood is your screensaver. There's a lot of unspoken rules about being a drug dealer. You know, like, don't get high off your own supply. But since I'm such a perfectionist, I try all my shit to make sure they're getting the highest quality product. Name one drug dealer that has their own QC department. You have to give up a lot to be a drug dealer. You know, family life, social life, love oh, life. Is it tragic now? It's all about that hustle. Love is fucking fake, bitch. I'm trying to get some dick. And if you get me pregnant, I'm a fucking shoot it. Fucking abortion clinic. Of course. I, 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 I get it. It's a, it's a funny meme about how tragic it is to be a, uh, a drug dealer or something. I guess. I have many other talents and hobbies. Like, I'm. Oh, dear God. We're only slightly over halfway. I'm not just good at selling drugs. I mean, I'm also really good at pissing blood into a storm drain while hiding from the cops. I never really wanted to be a drug dealer. Uh, she's not your average. She's not like other girls, chat. This is, this girl's damaged. You know, no wonder our boy likes Suicide Squad so much. I could really see this girl with a damaged tattoo on the front of her face. I wanted to be a dancer. I love dancing in my free time. It really relaxes me. What is she doing in Cinematic Venom's bedroom? Drug dealing is dangerous as fuck. That's why I carry a gun with me everywhere I go. So people know I don't fuck around. I mean, wait, fuck. Wait, wait, hang on. That's why I carry a gun with me everywhere I go. Warning, not a toy. Uh, use may cause serious... Okay. I just, I was wondering if that was like the opposite of that. It was a warning label that was like, Warning, this is a toy. This is not a real gun, but okay. Go. So people know I don't fuck around. I mean, you have to be tough as nails to work in this field. You like my Charmander? I already got three gems. I really don't like to promote. Okay, now here we can see. He, here we can you see. You like my Charmander? Here we can see the absolute hypocrisy at the nature of this character. Where earlier she was complaining about the incels with their Naruto or whatever, but now here she's clearly got a Charmander, or as as she pronounces it. You like my Charmander? Charmander? I already got three gems. I really don't like to promote violence. I'ma empty a clip in that bitch. But I do promote self-defense. I feel like my ideas often go unappreciated just because of the work that I do. I sort oh, of- Oh, it was an airsoft gun, okay. I feel like Kanye West, you know? Like I was telling people college was a scam fucking years ago, but just now are they starting to listen? This dropout is making more money than your fucking therapist, bitch. I learned more about economic selling crack than I would have if I got a business degree. College is a money pit. Tell your parents to go fuck themselves. My parents always said I'd be a loser my whole life, and that fucked me up mentally, but now I make more money than both of them so they can suck a dick. My plan for the future is to start a punk band. I've already got a couple names. I like this one, The Piss Babies. This song is dedicated to my eighth grade art teacher that tried to finger me when I was 14. Sometimes I feel a bit silly, you know? A little bit out of my element. I mean, it's not every day you see someone my age. <sighs> I just, again, I'm struggling to try to understand what, like, the context for this is, I guess. Like, what, what is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, okay, it's a short film, but it's not, it's kind of just a YouTube video. But even at that, it's not like a funny YouTube skit. It's like, I guess, a satire of a drug dealer uh it's not funny and it's not really emotional though so again i'm just what is this like what am i supposed to, it's like a i i don't know it's like it truly is like a parody of itself more than anything it's like what you'd imagine a sh a shitty hipster student film kind of thing would be this, like, edgy, fucking nihilistic trash. Selling these hard drugs and taking such big risks. But I find it best to get yeah, into entrepreneurial affairs at an early this age. This is essentially, this guy made a PSA as, like, a short film. When I die at the age of 27 in a violent shootout with the person that took my gym in Pokemon Go, I want to be remembered as the greatest entrepreneur of all time. I'm basically the fucking Jeff Bezos of selling coke to minors. 
When I was a baby, my mom kept her coke in my crib. And here I am, all these years later, still a baby with coke in her crib. Mm-hmm. Are we done yet? No? Is there a, is there a twist? Oh, story essay or written and directed by Neo G. You know, you might you might have wanted credit to this one to Alan Smithy, bro. I'm just gonna be real. Uh this one not your best. Not your best work, honestly. Uh oh my god, look at this look at the fucking song credits. Oh my god, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so that's Neo Jesus. Truly one of the most the 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 hardest triers. Uh, one of the hardest tryhards I've ever looked at. Uh, we're gonna move along, and we're gonna be taking a look at. Let's see here. Uh, well, hmm. do I want to do the one that I'm kind of familiar with, or do I want to do the one that I'm Hmm. Ah, fuck it. Let's do Chris Chan's brother. So this is Cole Smithy. And, uh, yeah, as I say, this is Chris Chan's brother. For those of you who don't know, this is, like, his half-brother. I think it's Bob Chandler's son, in particular. I don't think it's... I, I think Bar Barb is not his mom. Or maybe I got that backwards. I think, it, I think he's Bob's son. But yeah, this is Chris Chan's brother, and I mean, you know, I'm putting this out here as a lark. For all I know, he's got. For all I know, he's a really good film criticizer, and I'll agree with his points. Except I will say, I, I don't know what the fuck are these movies? The, all these like ancient movies. He hasn't uploaded in like seven years, for one thing. So he does. He's not gonna have anything super recent. But even then, everything he's got here is like. Like, the newest thing here is, like, Sin City. What the fuck? Oh, is this guy another giant fucking hipster? He only watches, like, movies from the 40s. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with movies from the 40s, but... But boy, this sure is a lot of Gone with the Wind. Uh-huh. Okay, well... The Last Picture Show. And I don't know. I don't know which one of these is, like... You know what? Enter the Dragon. Sure. Good classic Bruce Lee movie. Let's see Chris Chan's brother reviewing the Bruce Lee classic, Enter the Dragon. The smartest film critic in the world, oh my God. Cole Smithy. And we're already into it. Okay, we're going to hope that that's a joke. We're just going to hope that that's a nice joke, because it sounds like a joke. Uh... We're just, we're moving along. Hi, this is Cole Smithy, and your guide to classic cinema. From a historical perspective, Bruce Lee's last movie is a martial arts film of epic proportions. Concentrate on the finger, or uh, you will... You know, my left ear is really loving this one. I, I hate it when people say that. That's such an overused fucking YouTube comment-esque thing to say, but I mean, it's it's re when it's relevant, it's relevant. Uh, Miss all that heavenly glory. I, I'm always fascinated by when people are criticizing films or whatever, and yet their production can be so bad in their videos that they'll be like, oh yeah, just leave it as mono on one channel. Let's just leave it so it sounds like a fucking Beatles song. Yeah, this is fine. Having made his name on American television with scene-stealing performances as Cato on the popular children's program The Green Hornet, Bruce Lee was poised to establish a new kind of movie franchise as a sort of Asian-American James Bond. Mm -hmm. Lee's lifetime of developing a personal style and philosophy of martial arts, called Jeet Kune Do, had already made an indelible mark on international that cinema style audiences with films made under the auspices of Raymond Chow's Golden Harvest Production Studios in Hong Kong. Fist of Fury, Return of the Dragon, and The Chinese Connection became touchstones for a generation of movie audiences and martial arts practitioners and enthusiasts. I mean, so far this, this is a fine review. I mean, this is what... I'm not hearing anything that's super wrong or stupid so far uh although screenwriter michael allen's cartoonish script for enter the dragon and you know just keep in mind this is a half brother of chris chan like 
this is quite a step up in terms of qu like video content from a, a a Chandler. So I mean, again, leaves much to be desired. Bruce Lee's contributions to the film's dramatic fight sequences more than compensate for the film's flimsy narrative underpinnings. Lee famously wrote and directed the film's opening fight sequence set in a Shaolin monastery. Keeping with the popular revenge theme of 70s era cinema, the story establishes Bruce Lee's character, Lee, as a Shaolin student called upon by a British military intelligence agency to infiltrate the island compound of Han, a former Shaolin monk turned evil villain who now heads up a drug smuggling and sex trafficking ring. Okay, Lee's well, I mean, this is just him going through the plot and everything. This, again, this seems like a perfectly valid review people want people in chat really wanted me to talk about cole smithy but I, I don't know he's fine you don't really have anything too interesting to talk about let's see him talk about sin city i've never seen sin city but the review the the ratings here aren't great i can just i'm just assuming he probably also got like bombarded with fucking uh a log type people like hate shitting on him because he's vaguely related to someone on the internet that they don't like or whatever so i mean i'm not even sure if i'm not even sure if the like to dislike ratio is something we should take all that seriously but you know let's just watch again i've never seen sin city so i don't know what i don't know what to i don't know what he's gonna have to the say the smartest about. film critic in the I world i do know he's the smartest cole film critic smithy. in the world that much i know Hi, this is cole smithy and your guide to classic cinema Sin City is a high-concept tour de force rendering of Frank Miller's wickedly sexy and grotesque graphic novel homage to the hard-boiled noir style of Dashiell Hammett and Mickey Spillane. Uh, oh, oh, hang on there, fella. I don't need to get copyright struck by the Sin City company. Use negative imagery with accents of color especially blood red, to emphasize character traits and show the cartoon action exactly as Miller originally drew it. Frank Miller's participation with Robert Rodriguez in the film's production speaks to the clarity of vision on display. The filmmaker's dynamic use of green screen technology to flesh out the story's urban terrain is stunning. Black and white characters bleed bright white blood from black bullet wounds. This really is eye candy. Mickey Rourke, Bruce Willis, Benicio Del Toro, Clive Owen, and Jessica Alba pop from the screen as iconic. I mean, I, I don't know, he likes the movie. There's really not much to say about this. It's kind of just a review. I guess a non B disagrees. He, he, he thought it was form over substance, but, you know, uh, again, People wanted me to look at the Cole Smithy channel, but really it's just him, you know, looking at looking at movies. That none of them are particularly, you know. People keep saying to look at his Toy Story 3 review, but I don't see that here. Maybe he has another channel. Uh, I don't know, but, I mean, it, he seems fine. I, honestly, even in terms of, like, if he doesn't like a movie or something, he seems at least... Like he makes sense and is somewhat put together. So I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna move along from Cole Smithy because he's I don't know where he's been for seven years. Again, his his most recent upload was uh uh yeah seven years ago. So I don't know where he's been for all that time. But you know we're we're just gonna we're just gonna move along, and we're gonna take a look now at uh oh boy. This is the blockbuster buster. People have been asking for this one. Uh, and this is... This is essentially like, a again, a nostalgia critic type person. I think he was actually on that guy with the glasses. So unlike uh, Cinematic Venom, he's not a complete failure at doing what he's trying to do. Uh, but uh apparently most of his videos are pretty bad so i don't know uh, i i really don't know let's let's take a look uh oh boy what is this oh boy what the fuck is this um ash versus evil dead the darkest minds you know oh god he's got one with linkara and obscurus lupa oh no oh no i can't watch that I don't have enough alcohol left. I can't watch that. Let's see his most popular. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012. 
Spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, you know, I've been in a Spider-Man mood. What does he have to say about this? For those of you who... No. Oh my god, he looks like other, other Joe. For those of you who missed earlier in the stream, I've been getting... I've been really getting into comics lately. Mostly Marvel stuff. And I've been really enjoying, uh, you know, early Spider-Man as well as, uh, especially 2099. Uh, so yeah, let's see what he has to say. This... Uh, esteemed critic about a uh, spectacular Spider-Man. No matter what life brings me, I'll never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. And today, I'm gonna use my great power to tell you about one of the absolute greatest shows to ever be based on one of the Marvel properties. Oh, my ears. Greetings, fanboys and fangirls. I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. For ye. Hello, Erod. Uh. You know, I don't tend to like to make fun of people's teeth. I, I I've been having some dental problems recently. You know, I gotta gotta go to a dentist and everything. So I mean, it it happens to the best of us. But I mean, oh boy. That's unfortunate. Years I That's have proclaimed that Spectacular Spider-Man is the greatest Spider-Man adaptation of all time. And today, I'm gonna tell you why. Now, for those of you long-term viewers, yes, I did do a Spectacular Spider-Man Honest Review a few years back. But that was one of my early videos, and the production of which was very rushed, and I always wanted to go back and redo it. And if Spider-Man can get multiple reboots, why not me? Spectacular Spider-Man began as nothing more well, because people actually like watching uh, Spider-Man, so... ...more than an elaborate commercial for the... I mean, you asked. ...the Sony Spider-Man franchise, until animation veterans Victor Cook and Greg Wiseman came on board. Both men had worked for Disney for the better part of the 90s, and jumped at the chance to produce a show about their favorite superhero. Before Spectacular Spider-Man, Cook was best known as the director of the majority of the episodes of 101 Dalmatians the series and Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. All the while, Wiseman was best known for creating a little show for Disney called Gargoyles. Some of you might have heard of it. FYI, there are quite a few Gargoyles Easter eggs throughout the series, namely Broadway getting a few strategic cameos. But anyway, suffice it to say, Spider-Man was in really good hands. And on top of that, Sony Pictures put very few restrictions on the two creators. All right, uh, unfortunately, this doesn't seem like it's actually that bad of a Played video. by horror icon Robert I'm sure this is fine, honestly. He's just kind of going through what it's, uh, you know... I don't, I don't know. He's just, just kind of going through the thing. I guess I'm, I guess I'm really just gonna have to watch the video with Linkara, because frankly, I'm watching this video and I'm just like, man, I know I'm missing out by not watching the Linkara video. So let's just, let's just get to it. Honestly, let's, let's just get to it. I hate this. Five seconds in and nothing of importance has happened. Cool. No, we're not worried. We're not too worried here about like retaining the audience or anything. No, that's fine. Ow! 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 Turn down. Sorry, but I had to stop. You. What is it that possessed all of these idiots on the internet to think any of this was acceptable? Like, I swear to God, it's Cinematic Venom, this genius, fucking, even just Nostalgia Critic, like, what, ah, uh, what made you people think this was fine? You people are fucking, look, ah, uh, you look ridiculous. You should be ashamed. <laughs> You like that? This new spell I created when I started dabbling in dark magic. 
Oh, no. Guys, it's the token girl from Cinematic Venom, all grown up. Idea from Captain Marvel. Whatever you shoot me with, I can absorb it, amplify it. Why does she talk like she's a really bad dominatrix? And shoot it back. Sounds like... This is her terrible ASMR dom channel, where she calls us, like, ba babies or whatever. At you. How long does it take to make one of your videos? Ten minutes? It would take me ten days to make one of mine. Not to mention, I'd have to transmit the signal illegally so my fans could watch it. Oh. You... Are a spoiled internet brat. Ugh. 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 And you don't deserve to be the blockbuster buster. <laughs> oh my god. Chad, I need assistance. This is this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna be a special one. Uh, by the way, obviously we're not gonna watch the whole thing, but I sure I sure am happy to see this skit at the very least. You're not gonna win this time, Erod. Let's move to a more appropriate location. <laughs> like what I've done with the place. Where am I? A classroom. Where you'll learn your final lesson. But why did you bring me here? Because I'm not an idiot. I know how you've beaten those supervillains in the past. Oh my god. Right when your power is almost drained, you always pull out some last minute victory through some weapon you have hidden in your base or by calling out to some of your friends for help. So I took away your options. No powers. No weapons. No friends. Is this what comic books led to? Is that is that what the problem was? Was comic books the monologuing supervillains and whatnot? Is that what this is all about? Cause that's what it seems like. This is this is Oh I don't you know, people often look at stuff like this and they're like, oh they're just having fun. Eh, it's fine. Eh. And it's like, no. No, it isn't. Let's be honest with ourselves. This isn't acceptable. I don't care if you're just having fun. Stop. I don't care. There's lots of fun things. Play pinball. That's fun. This is bad. Don't do this. Never ever do this. The stage is set. Time to die. Time to die. Get away from him, you wish! And now, now the quality of the, f the the video increases significantly. Now that our 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 shining savior is here, uh, the light bringer himself, everybody, here to run away from another crime. The guard, no! Oh, Gabe says that it's also Golden Globes Day. I had no idea. Yeah, this is perfect. We get to look at this lady's Golden Globes, and uh, we get to imagine the Golden Globes on this fucking asshole for making this video to begin with. Well, thank you for And also something about films. Coming, pal. Don't mention it! Oh, that's a good shot right there. A brief reminder of the scene in the third uh, Nostalgia Critic movie where Linkara rapes the Nostalgia Chick. Um, technically, it's a robot, but uh, that happens. Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> to be with never mind hey, bitch let's go I can't say bitch L linkara at plus one you, you can't say that that's offensive 
Guys, if Lindsay Ellis hears you say words like that, she's gonna get mad at you. You guys gotta be good no! allies. No, 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 Oh, damn, the Metroid Prime 4 leak is really, really raising a lot of questions. So, Lupa, where'd you get the sweet shield? It's in the trunk of my car. only one who thinks he looks exactly like like bootleg fucking else world's angry joe right like this is this is other universe angry joe this is although his profile oh, i'm just noticing his profile now he looks like a cartoon character what is with this long flat space between his nose and his mouth it looks like he was drawn by the ren and stimpy guys <laughs> All right, you two, make yourself useful. Scan the hell out of this place. That's a prototype. Oh yes, I also watch Doctor Who and know this music and know what a sonic screwdriver is. What a great scene that fills me with laughter you know i i realize now watching shit like this this is why ready player one came out you know it all comes back to that shitty book with me now the, that that book is my fucking it's 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 ingrained in my brain as one of the worst things and i'm just left to wonder how society could have crumbled to the point where we thought that ready player one was a fucking good book that deserved to be a new york times bestseller and you know what? Watching these idiots recreate a scene from Doctor Who because, hey, it happened in Doctor Who, and so if it, if we do it here, but it's way shittier and it's a bunch of dorky-looking losers, that'll be comedy, I guess. That's why Ready Player One happened. It's just, hey, that's a thing. I know that. I understood that reference. Good movie. Good book. Our screwdrivers like this. They're scientific instruments, not water pistols. Does anybody have anything? Yeah, it was a short range teleport, which means she's still close by. Good. Set up an algorithm. See if eventually you can reverse the polarity. Will do. Uh, so I got a question since I'm here for some reason. Who was that chick with the tune? That was Una St. James, a thief first blockbuster buster. Yeah, she. Wait, you watch the show? Of course, man. Watch mine, don't you? Yeah. Uh, never miss it. Nobody reviews lamps like you do, pal. Okay, so what does this Uno want? My power's back. Every time I get angry, she siphons them out. Soon, she's gonna have enough. No, just, I'd just like to point out once again, I also used to watch Linkara and some of these people. I used to watch Obscurus Lupa, too. Back when I was, like, 16 at the oldest. At the oldest. I think I might have stopped when I was 15, to be honest. So we're talking, like, 11 years ago at this point was the last time I probably unironically watched any of this shit. And yet these people just keep making it uh, and apparently think it's fine. And they don't need to, like, upgrade or stop being so unbelievably cringe. Uh, I get, it just, it's amazing to me that, like, it, it's been, like, like, a long time since I stopped watching these fucking people, and yet now, these people apparently have not, uh, it's, it's the same with Cinematic Venom, honestly, it's just that somehow these people are so much older, and yet they have not picked up any level of self-awareness, it's incredible. Uh, that's just incredible. Energy to pick up my hammer, and then all hope is lost. Have you tried not getting angry? And yes, chat member, we did look at Chris Chan's brother. He was fine. Uh, in a stunning twist, Chris Chan's brother was the most normal and reasonable thing we've looked at probably ever on this stream. I'm gonna be honest. He was just some guy reviewing movies. He was fine. His audio was kind of shit. But he was from like 
10 years ago or whatever, so it's fine. Whatever. It's not that easy, Link Kara. She wants me to review Justice League, which will definitely make me angry. And if I don't review it, she's gonna kill all my friends with missiles. Bummer. Wait, what if we all review the movie together? That way we'll all carry the burden and you won't get as angry. I don't know. I don't oh, know. guys, he's the angry guy on the internet who criticizes things. Ha 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 ha. You know what the biggest insult about that Neo Jesus fucking shit is? I'm still on that guy. I'm still mad at that guy. The biggest shit about that that I hated was that there are a lot of shitty film reviewers out there, but he seemed to go for the ones that are actually respected and liked by people. He didn't talk about fucking people like this guy. Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, you want to shit on film reviewers? Go with fucking God. Go... Go make fun of n Nostalgia Critic. Fine, great, sure. But, uh, uh, there's so many people out here willing to do shit like this. You... Till he can come up with a plan. This what? fucking shitty bootleg of AVGN from like 15 years ago. My god. Oh, I can't say I don't need that help. I hate to break it to you, man, but you're at a quarter power, and I don't think we're going to be able to defeat Uno with just my magic gun and Lupa's. Uniqueness. Agreed. But Una still made one grave mistake. She left the movie here. She was in this video. Oh, I get it. Care what? Whenever I touch a DVD, I can acquire the powers and abilities of any of the characters from- Oh, this gets even stupider. Holy shit. That movie or show. What, really? Yeah, and not only that, I can give a copy of said powers to another person. Hell, I gave Link- Thank you for explaining everything about how dumb this is, actually. Because, like, if we had to watch not- If we had to not watch this video, I might not have truly understood the depths to which- uh, to, the, the depths of stupidity that this actually reaches, but, uh, you know, th thank you, chat, for- well, you didn't really do it. I saw this and I was like, oh god, I'm gonna have to watch this video. I don't want to, and I tried not to, but, you know, here we are. And it's a good thing I did. Power Jedi powers once. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So, what, he just touches the DVD and then, boop, we're superheroes? Yeah, you see, the Buster Force allows me to- Stop what you're saying. I'm in. Alright. Everybody grab a shoulder. Well then, let's get dangerous. Oh my god, this is getting worse. I... I bet you didn't think when we started this video on how- and it was that bad. I bet you didn't think it would get worse, but here- here we are! And I'm Superman! <laughs> ah! Okay, this is, uh, gonna take some getting used to. So if I'm Batman, and you're Superman, then that must mean that Lupa is... Cyborg! Oh yeah! <laughs> Nobody messes with Cyborg! Team Titans go! Booyah! <laughs> um... Once again, you didn't even think it could get worse after he turned into... fucking special needs Superman, but here we are! It gets maybe, worse. Maybe you shouldn't be cyborg. Okay, fine. I'll be the girl. Stand back, dweebs. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Groovy. Um. Yeah, that was okay. Moderately acceptable. minutes into this and we haven't actually started the review yet. Jesus Christ. This is the worst. And then there came a day, a day unlike any other, when the internet's mightiest reviewers found themselves united against a common threat. On that day, they became the trinity of awesomeness to review the films that no reviewer should review alone. You know, we 
we'd actually get there faster if we weren't walking in slow motion. Lupa! Oh, ha, 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 ha. See, the joke is that they know about the trope that they're... That's what the joke is. Is they know that they... they, they laugh! That is one of the high, one of the highest points of awkwardness of anything on that guy with the glasses. I'm him like awkwardly shuffling over and going, "It's my show." This this strange little man who nobody's ever heard of. The only reason this guy got out of Change the Channel completely unscathed, I'm assuming, is because nobody knows who the fuck he is. Jesus Christ. Hey, fangirls. I'm Linkara. I'm Obscurus Lupa. And I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. The Justice League might not have been the first superhero team, but they were the ones that made superhero teams cool. Three seminal comic book issues jump-started the Silver Age. Showcase number four, which introduced Barry Allen as The Flash. Showcase number 22, which introduced Hal Jordan as Green Lantern. And Brave and the Bold number 28, which introduced the Justice League. You know, I'm pretty sure, uh... I'm pretty sure the Avengers was more popular uh i don't know i might be wrong about that but uh justice league was such a successful comic book series that it prompted the creation of marvel's fantastic four which uh... in part jump-started the marvel silver age and inevitably led to the creation of the league's marvel counterpart the avengers now that comic book movies are all the rage and Avengers just so happens to be one of the highest grossing franchises, it was only a matter of time before DC and Warners pooped out a Justice League movie to capitalize on the current popularity of the genre. And poop they did. DC Comics and Justice League was the very first- Now chat, this is a low-hanging fruit of a review, because again, it's like, this is a bad movie. It's not exactly like we're watching somebody with terrible opinions about like the Lord of the Rings franchise or whatever. This is just, this is just somebody who also agrees that this is a, ba <clears throat> a bad movie. So, I mean, there's nothing too surprising here. in I, I would imagine, although who am I to say we spent like eight and a half minutes on the stupidest skit I've ever seen. So, I mean, I, I shouldn't judge too quickly. First thing that I was a fan of ever since I was seven years old. So I've pretty much been waiting for a Justice League movie all my life. And uh, my maturity is severely stunted, so you know it matters to me. And now, it turns out to be a movie that I have to bust. But I won't have to suffer through it alone. This is always my favorite part about these stupid fucking internet film reviewers where they act like anybody cares or wants them to do this shit. And it's like, oh, you know, it's it's time again for me to put on my Indiana Jones hat of of busting films cuz busting makes me feel good. Nobody cares, genius. Don't nobody cares. Just talk about movies or don't, whatever. Here we go. So our movie begins with cell phone footage of a couple of kids interviewing Superman. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's something wrong with this scene. But the fact that it's a complete ripoff of the first scene in Spider-Man Homecoming? But I can't quite put my finger on I'll write the CGI upper lip of on it. Linkara, what do you think? Nope! Nope, I see nothing wrong with it at all. Lupa, how about you? Sorry boys, all I see... With this, we cut to Gotham City, where Batfleck is using a criminal as bait. And why would this criminal attract a parademon? Fear. I can smell it. Point. Oh, then just in case this version of Batman didn't come up dumb and reckless enough, his plan was to attract the parademon and then just jump and grab it. First he endangers a man's life and now this? Oh, uh, cut him some slack. It's an advanced alien life form here. So you know what this is? This is... <clears throat> This is basically just 
a worse version of the video from, I think it actually was like 10 years ago, where it was like Nostalgia Critic, Spoonie, and Linkara reviewing a movie together. And they it was basically exactly like this. They were, all three of them sat in view of the camera, and they'd like go through the thing and they'd do shitty skits and scripted jokes between them, haha. -ha. And that was better than this. And that was ten years ago. And I really don't... I mean, again, you know, people will use the argument of like, Oh, but they're just having fun. And it's like... <sighs> yeah? But it's just so alarming to me that you didn't... Progress at all in ten years? Like, you didn't make anything better than... Than that? shitty video that doesn't even hold up anymore like like they're still so dead set on making basically the exact same content that i used to fucking watch 10 years ago from nostalgia critic except now it's worse and it's less it's more unforgivable because it's like how the fuck you should know better that better standards have been set for videos like this and you're out here still not even reaching the level of a shitty Nostalgia Critic video from 10 years ago. Superman is an advanced alien life form and he was far better prepared when, you know, he tried to murder him. You're missing the point of the scene, my dudes. And what's that? Well, Batman just caught a demon with his bare hands. That is a bad mother- Shut, Shut your mouth. mouth! Just talk about Batman. I dig it. Uh, yeah, a, a very relevant Shaft reference in this Justice League video? Why are they referencing Shaft? What the fuck was that? So after a pointless tussle, Batflick does what he should have done from this the beginning. This is mindless. He captures the parademon in a net. This, this review is the Justice League of internet reviews. But before he can interrogate him, the parademon self-destructs, leaving him a handy-dandy clue to the main villain's ultimate plan. Three squares? Who are the villains? The blockheads? The what? You know, the blockheads. From Gumby? He can do almost anything all the time. God damn it, I'm old. So we cut to Keystone. You know, keep in mind, that was scripted. You know, like, I, obviously the joke was that that was, uh, oh, ha ha, he, stupid reference, nobody cares about, ha ha, the joke is I'm not funny, I, I, I get it, yeah, the easiest form of comedy, I understand. Uh, once again, you're not David Brent out here, but, uh, just keep in mind, like, that would have been... <sighs> this would probably, like... Here's here's the thing, watching this, this would legitimately be better if it was just unscripted. Uh, that's the takeaway I have from this. I mean, say what you will about Linkara or any of these people, but I, I absolutely believe that this would be less obnoxious if they didn't script in these awful jokes. If they just talked about the fucking movie, it would be so much better than this, like, heavily scripted... Fucking, okay guys, rehearse your shitty jokes. Oh, you gotta get the timing right on that one. We gotta hit the shaft reference on point there. Come on, let's try that again from the top. The city, where a group of random bad guys are robbing a bank. Well, they should have brought more guns, a tank, and a battleship, because this bank is guarded by Wonder Woman. Take this, and that, and one of these. Well, you got bullets? Well, I have bracelets, mother lover. You got a bomb too? Well, I breakfast son oh snap yeah why is she talking like an 80s like black exploitation trope why is she talking like an old comic issue of luke cage uh which by the way also check out luke cage uh, his his comic is fucking wild uh it's, it's pretty good but yeah i don't i don't know why she's uh talking like a like a fucking black exploitation stereotype I figured that was just the Shaft reference, but she just keeps talking like that. I feel like that's a little bit racist, Lupa, but okay. Say it with me now. That, that was, was awesome. awesome. So we cut to a remote village in Iceland, where Batflick, the dark loner who generally trusts no one, tries to recruit Aquaman to help him fight the Parademons and the mystery villain. 
This is how you know this grumpy old man is apparently the world's greatest detective. Oh, who could Aquaman be? This mysterious stranger with the weird milky eyes who's totally built like a brick house? I don't know what's more infuriating, that Aquaman's being portrayed as a frat boy, or that he openly keeps referring to Bruce as Batman. He do address like a bat. Like, a, like an actual bat. Come on, these people live in the middle of nowhere. They probably don't know who Bruce Wayne is, let alone Batman. Plus, they're probably distracted by their- Chat member, I won't stand for that. This is my part where I become a good male feminist ally. Someone in chat is like, watching female YouTubers until we laugh. I, I know of a number of funny female YouTubers. Don't- don't compare Obscurus Lupa to people with actual talent. Impromptu gravelly voice contest. There are enemies coming from far- And keep in mind, Obscurus Lupa is the fucking best part of this trio right now, so let's- Let's not even- let's not even shit on her too hard. She's not very funny, but none of them are, and at, at least she's the least obnoxious so far. Far away. You should get out. I'm also Batman. I'm the Green Arrow. <laughs> Wear a mask. <laughs> Sound like that. I don't- If you want, I could go deeper. No, we're good, thank you. Down here. It's fine. Okay. So we cut to Themyscira, where we discover that the Blockheads are not behind the alien invasion, as the squares in the drawing that the Parademon left behind are actually three mother boxes, meaning that the villain behind this plot is from Apocalypse. And oh my god, it's going to be Darkseid? Actually, uh, no. Oh jeez. Who is it gonna be? Uh, Steppenwolf. What? Who? Exactly. You know, this is another thing where I just keep coming back to that idiot Neo Jesus. This is my new all, my new fucking nemesis, my my arch nemesis now. <laughs> Every time I watch something now, I'm going to come back to his stupid opinions on film criticism or or movies in general and I'm just thinking about him talking about Justice League. He'd probably be like, "Ah, oh, well yeah, they use this shitty terrible villain that nobody cares about." And they botched the, you know, the stuff that actually could have been okay in this movie. But what did you expect? It's just a stupid superhero movie for kids. Oh god. Oh god. New, new arch nemesis. I can't... I... <laughs> Millennia in I'm just thinking about it because I'm like, man, you know, this movie was destined to be shit. But at the same time... At the same time... You could have at least made it be dark side, you know, like it could have been shit, but it could have at least had the main guy people care about as the bad guy that nobody cares about. But they didn't even get that right. It's incredible. Steppenwolf, everybody. At last, you call me home. Holy fart sickles! I've seen better CGI and video game cutscenes, and that is no joke. I would never joke about video game cutscenes. That's especially sad when you stop to consider how expensive- Okay, maybe she's not the, the least obnoxious person here. Uh, I think I'm gonna round this off pretty soon, cause... I mean, I'm gonna pinch this loaf fairly soon, cause we've got like another fucking 25 minute terrible skit at the end here, so... Let's get to this. Uh, oh jeez. Enough bullshit for today. I don't know how you two did it, but he's managed to keep a shred of his power. You two need to die, and he needs to keep reviewing until I get what I want. Wallpapers. People in chat are saying they should have used Granny Goodness for the for the villain for Justice League. You're not even. You're not even wrong. Granny Goodness was one of one of the main villains in season ten of Smallville, and I am fucking not in any way joking when I say that that is a much better realization of the Dark Side like apocalypse takeover plot. Season ten of Smallville puts the Justice League Hollywood movie to shame. Give me your best shot. Lupa. And Granny Goodness was one of the best parts of it, actually. On the count of three, slam your bracelets together. One, two, three! Yeah. Is this what it's like for you guys all the time? Yeah. yeah. I thought you just reviewed comics and movies and stuff. Yeah, 
meant to. Sometimes I look at Power Rangers. All real accomplished people. They should all feel good about themselves. I must admit, I'm impressed by your friend's loyalty. You no, know, I gotta say, we, we're talking shit about Linkara and this other guy now, but like, imagine... Imagine whenever Linkara has his, like, midlife crisis, and he looks back on all this, and he's like, Oh my god, I've, I've done nothing of value. This is all just stupid shit that's embarrassing to even people that are, like, under the age of 20. This is embarrassing to people who are under the legal drinking age. What the fuck have I done with my life? And he'll start trying to make, like, like legit art. That's gonna be incredible. Lightbringer 2? I can't wait. Ready to die at a moment's notice? Too bad you didn't have more friends to call for help. Gee, I wish I would have thought of that. Oh wait, I did. Oh my god, we got Rose Tico and Gwyneth Paltrow here. Great. How? I've monitored all communication with them. Not all communication. Little Miss Gamer warned us just- Is this supposed to be Gwyneth Paltrow or something? Cause she sh she's got the Iron Man. She's also missing her teeth. Who the fuck is this lady? Some time. Yeah, we go that little way before them so hit. But there was no stuff. And then there's the foreign exchange girl who can't speak English. Very cool. Having the missiles. Once the coordinates were programmed in. Una, you may have missiles, but we have Dr. Effect. Lady? I'm a mad scientist. I've been reprogramming missiles since I was in kindergarten. And I just reprogrammed. Who the fuck is this incel? And then to hit a different target. Ooh, you're gonna love this. Go help me, Kara. These Luke. videos aren't even made for children. That's the real sad part. They're not even meant for kids. You can't even use the argument that fucking Neo Jesus used where it's like, oh, it's just for kids. It's fine that it sucks. Because it's like, no. These are meant for them. They make these for them. Uh, uh, I have something I need to take care of. This is your last chance to surrender, Una. No! I'm glad we're on the same page. Can you get on a dental plan, maybe? All right, boys and girls. Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. This is gonna hurt. You know, there was a certain charm to these stupid ass fucking yo, know, let's let's watch this. Let's let's pause on this lady's like gap tooth here. There's a certain charm to these videos when they were coming out in like 2009. You know, back in the day when you saw AVGN fucking suiting up in the in the the NES gamer outfit to fight Robot Satan or whatever that that video was like, you know that was that was dumb. But at least it's got a level of like, yeah, you know, this was kind of this was interesting for its time. At the very least, this is sad. This is just pathetic that they're making this now. Like, when did this come out? Last two years ago. This is pathetic. Again, like, even early Nostalgia Critic, it was fine. Like, oh, yeah, he did, he had some, like, effects or whatever. They weren't great, but, you know, it was just one guy doing them. And it was kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, you tried. You did something kind of cool for whatever the time that, that it was. But this is, this is, this came out in 2019. And it's just, like, no fucking... I wouldn't even be surprised if he hasn't updated fucking Premiere since 2010. Uh, this is so shite. This is embarrassing. Kara! High five! No chat member, AVGN doesn't necessarily do better effects. I would say that he does now, but I, I would also say that even back in the day, he didn't necessarily do better effects, but it was better to watch them because it was like, okay, well, that's the best you can do for fucking 2006 when the, like, the Simon's Quest review came out. You know what I mean? But this is 2019. Not only should these people have known better, 
to them to do this, but they should have at least done it better. This is so pathetic. <laughs> Want some? I'll take a piece. No! No! You shouldn't win! This just keeps going, Chad. Do we even want to keep watching this? This just goes for another fucking like ten minutes almost. Do we really want to keep watching this? I'm gonna put. I'm gonna leave it up to you. Do, would we like to move on? On on this wonderful pause frame. Find out next time. The main thing were the reviews and not the skits. I mean, yeah, that's true. The f the, the 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 stupid skits in an AVGN video were like, oh, they went over and above to really drive home this cool review. I mean, the review was fun, but they even put in the effort to make this interesting video, this this interesting like physical segment where they pretend to fight and everything. This is just so self indulgent. All right, everybody wants to move on, so. You can just fill in the blanks mentally of what happens for the, the rest of this fucking terrible video, but yeah, that's Blockbuster Buster, and thank you, chat, for suggesting him, because that was really quite something. Uh, I guess the final thing that I'd like to end the stream on, and really I should just end it here, but I have this, and you know, I have no, uh, I, don't, I don't have enough for a third stream, a third part, at least not yet, but uh... But I, I do want to cover this one last channel, and this is one I mentioned last time. At the very beginning of the last stream, I mentioned this. Uh, this is Confused Matthew. And if you haven't heard of Confused Matthew, uh, basically he's like an old-timey uh, like YouTube review guy. And he was around in like 2008 or something. This is like a re-upload of all of this shit. And so, uh, evidently, the story goes that uh, YMS Adam was, like, watching videos and video reviews, and he came across this guy, Confused Matthew, and he was like, this is so bad and stupid that if this guy can command an audience that watches him, so can I. And so, essentially, out of spite, Your Movie Sucks was born because this guy's channel was so stupid and bad. And, uh, now that we're all caught up, we go to the most popular here. Oh, this is the most popular. I want to see the Lion King video. That's the real classic that, uh, YMS was so mad at. Apparently this guy hates the Lion King. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, uh, but, you know, why don't we take a look? I can't find, I can find all the other Lion King 2 and 1.5 and, and everything, but... Let's take a look at his Marvel video, because he also hates Marvel, of course. Uh, no, I'm not out here. I've, I've been talking a lot about comics and stuff. And I'm not out here about to be like, oh, but the Marvel movies are so great. I think some of them are really good, and some of them are pretty forgettable. Uh, but, you know, at the very least, Marvel has managed to put out, like, fucking 20 movies or something that have all been at the very least watchable they have not made a single catwoman or like daredevil 2003 or a fucking misstep on par with the dceu and uh so i mean i think there's some level of absolutely criticize marvel to an extent but they've done something that's at least respectable and that's where all that's what I'll say about that. Uh, that all their movies aren't great, but you know, especially if you're a comic fan and you actually are into that niche, which I never really was. I was a fan of like superhero media, but I never read comics. Nowadays, I'm reading comics, and I'm like, man, this is making me appreciate these movies more, and all the attention to detail that they put in, and even like, you know, it's a, like the Spider-Man Homecoming movie even goes so far as to uh it goes so far as to like characterize people that haven't been in spider-man since the original couple comics like fucking f I, I don't know liz the the girl from the first movie she's actually in the comics i don't think she's there for long but she's like the mary jane before mary jane 
And so I, I always felt with Homecoming like, oh, well, yeah, why don't they have Mary Jane in this movie? That's weird. Who's this Liz girl? Why is she here? And it's like, oh, this is just a complete reference to the original Mary Jane before Mary Jane. Like, okay, I, got, I, I understand it. I get the picture. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm not like the biggest Marvel fan. Uh, so I'm not out here to like, no, you're wrong though. Marvel's great. Everything they do is great. But, but I do have some respect for them and, uh, and, and what they've managed to accomplish. Let's, let's watch confused Matthew shit on them. You're wasting your life making shit. Nobody cares. These movies are terrible. Oh, did I watch this last time? I think I might have watched this last time now. Cause I remember seeing this clip. What? Did I watch this last time? I, I got really drunk in the last stream. From all I remember, I watched Cinematic Venom and Neo Jesus and not this. I think I started watching this, but I, I stopped for some reason. Matthew's Marvel Madness. Uh-huh. My Marvel Studios sucks ass. That's too many S's. That's too many. That, that's not even like aesthetically pleasing to say. You got like studio sucks sass. That's actually really hard to say unless you're a snake. And wouldn't it be Marvel Studios suck ass? Because they're like one thing. I don't know. I guess I could say like Marvel Studios sucks penis, but I don't know. That might be kind of offensive. Let, let, let's just move on. So I've had the idea for this video in the works for a long time. Some of the script for this actually- now So far, Chad, I will say this, that that whole segment wasn't very funny, but at least it wasn't as bad as fucking, uh, at least it wasn't as bad as like a five minute E-Rod sketch. Really showed up in the preamble to my Guardians of the Galaxy review because it's been lying around for so long. But now finally seems the time to just sit down and let this all go. Just to say all of my piece on the issue in one fell swoop and just get it all out of my system. Because everyone already knows how I feel about this shitty, unrestrained, cash-sucking studio of absolute shit, but nobody really seems to understand why. So here, in one concise- um, We're all just so fascinated by why, please let us know. This video is why. Confused Matthew has never been anything more than something that I do for fun. I don't count myself among the talents that actually do this as a real product. Oh yeah, yeah, I did watch some of this because I remember this part. The talents like Nostalgia Critic, right? Yeah, go on. How much of this did I watch? Because I, I, it couldn't have been a lot of it. I don't... Uh, how much did I watch? This is surprising to me, because I seem to remember having this on the docket, but I didn't actually watch it. I'll have to review the footage when I'm, uh, when I'm doing part two, but, I mean, let's, or rather when I'm doing the, the clips for the original one and, and part two, but let's, let's watch. And or within a unified strategy, I just turn the mic on and talk about whatever I think is interesting. It started with Back to the Future Part 2 and The Lion King because those were two universally successful films that I didn't like very much, so it seemed the most interesting subjects for me to tackle. Later on, this kind of became the unspoken theme for my main reviews, although not for any reasons that I planned. You know, talking about movies that everybody liked but me for one reason or another. The pro right, you're so special, right? problem with that as a prime concept is that there actually aren't very many successful films that I feel that way about. A lot of the movies that I've reviewed, for good or for bad, either had mixed receptions in the first place, were requested reviews... Yeah, mixed reception like Kill Bill, one of the most widely respected and loved action movies of all time. Yeah, mixed reception. You know, audiences aren't sure what to think. Or popular demand reviews. In fact, most of the big reviews I've done have been films that people didn't like in the first place. I would wager that there are really only three films that fall into the extreme minority of opinion category. Back to the Future Part 2, The Lion King, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is likely why those are my three- Oh, he didn't like 2001 as well. Oh boy. You know what? I think actually- I might- We might move off of this video because I kind of want to see uh, any one of these three. All-time most controversial oh boy. reviews. So honestly, this idea that I disagree with the majority most of the time is not very well founded. In fact, rarely do I find myself having a view that differs that much from the majority. So as a concept, I'd say that the idea that I would continue to review films that everybody loved but me wasn't something that really worked out so well. 
But then Marvel came along, and they gave me perhaps the greatest gift or curse that someone like me can be bestowed. They gave me a whole fucking universe to despise. Ah, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A uh, whole universe to despise. Tons of movies that employ people and entertain people with actual plots that are legit and are not... I mean, they're never, they're never amazing. They're never, like, fucking incredible. I mean, I would say WandaVision's pretty amazing. It's doing some pretty fucking interesting, unique shit. Uh, but... Like, I, I don't know, it, having such vitriol over movies that, again, are at, at worst average, like, passable. Maybe that's why you don't like them, because they're just fine at worst? Do we really want movies that are, like, the fucking 2003 Bat Ben Affleck Daredevil movie? Do we want that? I would rather have a couple Thor 2s than have a Catwoman, no matter how funny it is. You know, as... I don't, I don't know, as in terms of actual, like, films that are quality, I, I'd rather have good movies than bad movies. Uh, why, why, why are you so mad? He's on the movie! What a blood-sucking, rancid, horrible waste of time, money, and attention. It may seem oh, okay. weird that I'm essentially doing a Confused Matthew review for an entire film studio rather than a film, but they really have left me no choice. It's not oh, just yeah. that these films are bad. They are. But the biggest problem is that oh, they're they also are. lorded over by an unrestrained whore giant of a studio that continues whore to shield them out. And that is actually more relevant than just talking about the films. Now, in fairness, people have made one defense of what Marvel is doing that I can kind of see. They've pointed out that they actually are doing something that no one has ever done before. Instead of just making franchises, they have tied multiple franchises together into the same universe. Now, I would argue that they do this poorly and sloppily and at the expense of the films they're actually making. I would also argue that... I mean, yes, in, on occasion, there's movies that have not necessarily needed the multi you know the, the the cinematic universe thing but a lot of the time especially now that it's really come into its own that's been a really interesting element actually and it's brought one of the more interesting things about comic books to the big screen in a way that's captured a lot of people's attention sure yeah having like whatever black widow in iron man 2 well, like, yeah, I guess she's not that interesting. She doesn't really need to be there. But, like, having the Hulk show up in Thor Ragnarok basically makes that movie uh, in a lot of the way. Uh, having Iron Man be a part of the whole the whole uh, Spider-Man home series. Now there's going to be a third one. You know, that's that's what that fucking movie is about. That's what that those three movies, I mean, two now, but... Uh, probably the third one as well that's what they're about is the character of spider-man you know homecoming into the avengers into this whole universe of shit he's coming home so to speak and it's pretty interesting what they've done it's not like high cinema or anything but again there's never really been anything like it before in quite this way and again yes yeah, sometimes you know you have like some not very interesting stuff like i don't know the fact that fucking vulture talking about spider-man the fact that uh michael keaton's vulture character is apparently going to show up in the the sony made morbius film that fucking nobody wants especially because it's from sony but like yeah, there's a couple times like that, or basically anything on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. But then there's times where it's, again, it's really interesting, and it's done in a very unique way that, again, I just have, I, I can't, I gotta give them some praise for. Uh, to be fair to Confused Matthew, during the, when this video was made, I'm guessing this was probably before, like, the Infinity Wars or whatever, but... But again, I mean, knowing what I know about the Marvel Cinematic Universe now, it's like, how much shit can we really give to the studio that managed to make a film about, like, 40 main characters 
be pretty good. Uh, if, you know, at the very least comprehensible and fairly entertaining. Like, that's, that's, that takes skill. That's not nothing. And, I don't know, uh, just this blind hatred of them because, I don't know, superheroes boring or whatever is ki ki kind of immature, honestly. People have done this before. They were called movie serials, which only existed because they barely had television yet, so a lot of these had to be serialized, and as soon as they could do this kind of shit faster and more efficiently on television, and didn't need to wait years for the next installment that may or may not be good, they stopped doing this, and to do something like this again would be literally taking us back to the cinematic dark ages. Uh, yeah, let's not do anything like serialized storytelling. Oh, wait, what's Netflix and pretty much most things people watch now? Uh-oh, I forgot about that. Now, again, this was a few years ago, but even whenever he referenced Guardians of the Galaxy, that was like 2014. Uh, so, I mean, House of Cards was a thing by then. Netflix was a thing by then. There was a lot of decent long-form Breaking Bads and The Wires and whatnot. So I don't even know what point he's making. He's complaining about serialized storytelling being outdated, I guess. Even though it's been proven that, if anything, it's a better format of telling a story. Because it just it allows for more detail and more long-form... I don't know, more more interest, in a, in a sense. Uh, it's a very bizarre complaint, but okay. But I do have to say that at the core, this is correct. There was no modern precedent for doing something like this. And that, in a way, was kind of a risk this studio took that actually paid off. I just think it resulted in shallow, knowingly bad films that extort money from the general public. Extort money from the general public. Really. I mean, again, the the Incredible Hulk movie may not have been the greatest, but you went to the fucking theater expecting to see the Hulk smashing things, and that's what you got. So how is that extorting money from the general public? It's It's not on the same level as Star Wars, where it's like they sold you two movies of a trilogy on the idea of like, oh yeah, all this stuff, and then they just randomly give you fucking... Palpatine at the end like yeah okay I could call that extorting the public fucking tricking people uh, in the in the classic Jay Bowman uh, quote from from the nerd crew just trick them just trick them it's fine um, but yeah I mean even the worst Marvel movie you pretty much know what you're getting when you go in and I always hear he mentioned earlier and by the way, chat, we're not going to be just ranting about this constantly. I'm probably going to end the stream fairly soon. This is just kind of dumb, and I'm having fun. Uh, but he mentioned earlier, like, oh, you know, that's a risk that they took, blah, blah, blah. One thing I often hear about Marvel is that they never take risks. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy was a pretty huge risk. Nobody fucking ever heard of those people before... The, that movie came out and even after it came out a lot of people myself included were like what the fuck is this who are these people why did they make this into a movie and they did that and it was really successful for them so i don't know again like wandavision is a, is a weird thing that is a bit of a risk you know they could have just made another superhero thing but instead they made this like deconstruction of sitcoms and the the television viewing experience, this meta commentary about shit. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just I'm seeing I'm hearing a lot of these arguments about like, oh, they don't take risks. The movies are blah blah blah. And I'm like, it's just really not true. I mean, again, not not all Marvel movies are great, but like Captain Marvel, fucking garbage. But you pretty much do what you were getting when you went in, at the very least. I can't say they've tricked us with anything yet. They haven't tried to sell a movie on shit that's not in it. They haven't tried to, like, gussy up the trailers or whatever. I, I don't know. Really original, though. 
I recently reviewed Guardians of the Galaxy, and in that review, I touched upon why I feel that way in the preamble, but honestly, I almost have to hand it to that movie. It actually didn't do anything in the way of extending the Cinematic Universe brand. It didn't make mention to any of the other, and I use this term loosely, movies. It was its Oh, own. this guy's the real MVP. He doesn't call, He doesn't consider feature-length productions that cost a lot of money and made a lot of people happy uh movies oh well, that's some real film criticism right there uh also the guardians of the galaxy actually very much did advance things for the overall story of those movies uh it's just that it did it in a very clever and interesting way that wasn't so in your face so in other words the completely uh disputes the thing you're saying I guess at this point, they, when the first one came out, I guess they didn't really know that a lot of the stuff in that movie was, like, setting things up for, you know, Thanos and whatnot, uh, the Krees and Skrulls and all that shit. I guess at the time you could think that, but that's part of what made it good, was that those were all little elements that they were establishing for later, so that when, you know, they make the inevitable movie about the Kree scroll war or whatever, you know, they're gonna wind up Oh, I know that. I know these this this group from this movie, and I know that group from okay, and that's the point. Own self-contained film. Yeah, I actually do have to give it credit for that. Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the only Marvel movies that I cannot criticize for being a commercial for something else. It is one of the only Marvel movies that I can actually criticize simply for being absolutely terrible. Oh yes, absolutely terrible. This, this fun, awesome fantasy movie that a lot of people liked. Just absolutely terrible. Nothing of merit here. Garbage. Garbage. My opinion's right. Your opinion is stupid! Not joking, that actually is an improvement for this studio. Guardians of the Galaxy was written and directed by James Gunn, an award-winning director and the writer of such cinematic masterpieces as Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, and by award-winning director, I mean he won not one, but two Razzie Awards! For worst director and worst oh screenplay. Boy. We're really out here, uh, <laughs> we're really out here trying to stir some shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I don't really know that much about James Gunn. I remember the film Super was fucking incredible. It was a movie that I hated when I first saw it. Because when I saw it, I was a teenager, and I was like, But this is stupid! That's not what superheroes do! This is dumb! Because I didn't get it. Uh, but yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, it's uh, I'm possibly a little too smart for this guy. I'm going to be honest. Uh, this, this guy might not be on the level of James Gunn. I, I don't know. Uh, Two Razzie Awards. I might want to try watching the live-action Cat in the Hat. Um... This is what Marvel Studios considers talent. Now, typically... Uh, obviously, this random YouTuber is, again, more talented and more worthy of judgment of that talent than... Uh... You know, I this this uh, the awkward thing, too, is like, you know, we're here, we're at the other side of the spectrum where... You know, where n that Neo-Jesus guy was like, oh, you can't dislike so-and-so because it's highly acclaimed, blah, blah, blah. But, I don't know, you gotta have better points than just, yeah, but you suck, though. Eh. But you're bad. You're not talented. You're bad. Like, uh, give me some actual criticism. I will not respond to comments or responses for my videos because I don't think that's my place. I've said my piece in my videos and everyone else is free to say theirs. But just keep oh, this in the back of your minds for the rest of time. Whenever that you're right and everybody else is stupid. Or anyone defends this studio, defends these films, defends Marvel as being anything but a shitty cash-sucking scam of a film studio. Scam. Just infer that I have responded with a mere three words. Two Razzie Awards. Okay. Um, let me just... So now, now you, you know, now you got me. Hang on. Uh, I gotta, just let me... James Gunn. And we're gonna take a look at that. 
And um, so we got, let's see. Oh wow, Super actually only has a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's wild. Yeah, I guess a lot of people are too stupid for James Gunn. That's incredible. Um, yeah, I'm just going through his list of movies here. Uh, and I mean, a lot of them are pretty highly acclaimed. So, I mean, some of them aren't good, but nobody, not everybody makes incredible things all the time. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what his point is, is that, oh, this, this guy they hired, he made a bad movie once or something. Um, you know, I think we're going to call it here. We watched some of Confused Matthew. We've been going for a while. Uh, I can keep going through this video and maybe watch more of his shit, but, I, you know, I'm good. Uh, to what end, you know, really? Like, to what end? I, I look at his shit and I'm just like, I don't know, most of the things you're saying are just really smug and shitty and stupid. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, to what end? Why, why, why would I continue? Uh, you know, the point's been made. Uh, maybe another time we might look at some more of his terrible opinions. Um, we'll look at how he apparently dislikes the Lion King because he doesn't understand the Lion King. Um, I, I remember watching that clip where he just completely misinterprets things. Uh, that was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, we might watch some more of that. For now, I'm going to be doing some super chats and things. I think we're going to... I'm gonna wind down the stream here and uh, get some music going. There you go. Let's see here. Um, Twenty dollars from Hunter Valentine. It's no sex weirdo stream, but I'll cringe nonetheless. That's what really matters anyway. Yeah, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh, 300 ISK from Snack. Just got home from Great Date and I'm very happy. Smiley face. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I hope you, uh, I hope you have another good day with, with, with that person. Two bucks from Lemon. Hey, Papa Claw, it's my birthday. I love your vids. Well, thank you, Lemon. Try not to be too sour. Five bucks from Megan O'Callaghan. Oh, and, th and happy birthday, Lemon. Uh, five bucks for Megan O'Callaghan. Sick time to do some labs while listening to Claw Daddy go off about some stupid jabronis. And then there's some praying emo emojis. Uh, I don't know what labs is. Probably something smarter than I'm qualified to talk about. Some some chemistry shit. You're about to be the next Spider-Man. So, I mean, you go, you, you, you go off, really. Uh, but, but thank you. Five bucks from Gabuko Mitsukiva. Glad to be watching another stream. I'm moving across the country tomorrow, so anything to distract me from the now helps. Thanks, Bear. Well, you're you're welcome. I'm I'm also I I wish I was moving across the country, cause at least then I'd have some place I was going that wasn't this apartment. Oh god. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been trying to move for a while, and uh, it's uh, tough tough going. Bad rental market. It's not a great rental market, and I don't have wonderful credit or anything, so it's uh, certainly certainly a fun time to be alive. Uh, the, the the pain is is a mutual one, I, I assure you. Two bucks from Celluloid Shot, Mick Chicken. I disagree. Five bucks from Michelle Arkham. Uh, we got some we got some uh, Japanese characters here that I can't read because I have not. Uh, I have not, uh, studied Japanese in, like, a year. I was learning. I actually do remember some of these characters, but I don't, I don't remember what they mean. So, I apologize. It's probably something really simple, uh, that I, that I should know. Uh, two bucks from Ty Dog. Did you hear that assigned male's author is a nonce? Ooh, nice. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Uh, speaking of nonces, uh, as I said earlier in the stream, we've got a returning supervillain. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody's favorite rat-themed villain uh, is coming to play. He's been unmasked and might want to stick around possibly tomorrow night for that stream. No promises, but sometime soon. 
Um, maybe we'll add an extra knots to that patrol. Uh, five pounds from Kelpie. I was meaning to donate my first paycheck, but I slept through all the streams up till now. I have some of my wage cage cash. Well, you know, I like to imagine that you, uh, you've slept through, like, a year's worth of streams, and this is the first one you got. Uh, damn, dude. Change that schedule, but thank you. Five bucks from Lemon. Love your vids, Papa Claw. Could I get a happy birthday? I mean, I, I think I already did happy birthday, you, uh, Lemon, but I mean, you know, just because you're, just because you're, you know, you're good. Oh, well, happy birthday. Uh, two bucks from Austin Kane. Thoughts on M, M, oh, Mr. Enter. Confused Matthew Quinton Review. I love, I love this super chat. It's just an attempt at three different names, but they're all kind of smushed together. I mean, Mr. Enter's whatever. I used to watch some of his videos when I was, like, hard up for uh, reviews of shit. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I saw somebody making fun of Family Guy, and I was like, yeah, okay, fine. And he seemed kind of lazy and shitty, and I didn't really care for his work. But people really hate him, and I don't I don't get that either. So I'm somewhere in the middle, I don't know. I'm I'm sure he's I'm sure he's a horrible person that I should hate, but I I don't know. Um confused Matthew, I think he's based on what I've seen of him, he's an idiot. Uh straight up, he's just a bit of an idiot. Uh he's an idiot with an, an overinflated ego who you know, it's it's the Dunning Kruger effect of internet reviewers where they they just assume that the reason everybody else thinks that they're wrong about their terrible opinions is because they're smarter than everyone. They don't They don't immediately assume that it might be because they have less comprehension than the average person, but... Uh, ten... Ten pounds from Freedom Crusher. Oh, uh, as for Quentin Reviews, get ready for the, the, qu the quarter... the Quentin editing where we look at the Quentin Reviews content next side by side with quartering content and we make fun. That's going to be a, that's going to be good cuz they're basically like high rule and low rule equivalents to one another, so that'll that'll be great. Uh 10 pounds from Freedom Crusher. Deadwing is a generic fantasy character. I am. I'm the hook hand guy. Uh you've seen me before. I I used to be the king of Atlantis for a short period. Five pounds from Space Dude Boy. Love your streams. Also, do you have a playlist for all this music on stream or just your tastes? I do. It's called Dead Wings Jabroni Music. Uh, I it's it's on my playlists thing. Uh, I don't know. Some of the songs have probably been taken down because music is illegal in our cyberpunk dystopian future. But uh, yeah, it's it's there. Uh, five pounds for Mr. Trigger. Hi, Claw. Please can you look at Cole Smithy, a.k.a. the half-brother of Christian. Again, Cole Smithy is possibly the least lol cow -ish person I've looked at. Uh, his videos are just some guy reviewing movies. There's nothing weird or bad about them, except some of the quality is a little bad, but, like, whatever. Um, five bucks from Calm BS. This guy is like a great value Cat Icarus. Oh, Cinematic Venom? Yes. He really truly is. I also felt that way. I don't know if I said that last time, but I did say that when I first watched his videos with my friends. Uh, great value caddy, that's for, that's for sure. Two bucks from Evil Betty. La la whoopsie boy. I'm using that. Uh, thanks, Claw Dad. Well, I mean, a prancing oopsie wah wah. Well, now I got it wrong. Wah wah. Wah wah, Ontario. La la boy. Buy books from Azanomatix. I just got some spending cash. I won't be able to stick around, but I hope you and everyone here has a great screen claw. Oh yeah, I, I've taken 20 years off of my life by screaming at people today. It's, it's great. Uh, thank you. Two bucks from Maggie Giles. Paul, Paul Joseph Watson voice. Imagine my shock! You know, that's how I feel every time I fight the shocker in any video game. Uh, five bucks from Roxy Plays. You have the kind of voice that makes me want to call you mommy and feed you tendies and ketchup while you stream. Uh, I don't think that's how that works. I think the mommy feeds the... I mean, I guess it can be how that works. Uh, thank you, I guess. I, I'm just confused by that one. Usually the mommy feeds the tendies. You wouldn't be calling me... 
Mommy. I guess if I, like, worked a long day, the kid wants to feed his mommy attendees. I guess that makes sense. That's a, that's a nice kid. Uh, 666 from FHDS... HDSJH. Good name, really. Really rolls off the tongue. My first time giving money to a channel. I mostly just download your old streams and listen to them at work. Good luck reading my name. Well, you can't say that when your name is just a bunch of letters. I mean, thank you, but... <laughs> enjoy enjoy the downloads, friend. Five bucks from Vlack. What's up, Dead Wings of Redemption? Back at it again with the stream I see. Look here! Listen! I'm at work and this is giving me life. Thanks, dork. Oh, you're welcome. I... I hope you, uh, I hope you have fun, and, uh, you know, appearing online does not stop, uh, appearing offline does not stop it. Fuck that up. Uh, five bucks from a warm toilet seat. Now that's a good name. Is the guy with the sunglasses supposed to be the cool one when you were watching Cinematic Venom, if you read it at the end? Yeah, no, it's like I said, that's the 90s image comics character of, of Cinematic Venom's lineup. Uh, it's, it's like the Punisher. Uh, so... Yeah, it's the, it's the cool edge master. Two bucks from uh, Maggie Giles. Goth nostalgia chick. Uh, she ate nostalgia chick, maybe. Two bucks from Marco R. Hi, Papa Claw. Have you seen Carts of Darkness? I don't know what that is, but uh, but but I I don't think I have. Um, sounds interesting. Is that like game carts or like shopping carts? Either or, honestly. Five bucks from Leo the Bum Tickler. This stream is very hullable. It is. It truly is. I'm a, I'm a bad guy. Um, Ten bucks from Glenn Lusk. Your stream, your streams are totally tubular. Claw, love your music tastes. Wishing you all the best. Well, thank you. I, I wish the best for you as well. And uh, I hope you, I hope you had fun today. Uh, five bucks from JP Fan, 1989. First time on live stream. Deadwing should do more porn acting vids. Oh, I remember that stream. That one didn't do well in terms of viewers. Uh, I always feel... It's a, it's a mixed feeling when I do streams or whatever, because I'll do something and I'm like, oh man, I had a lot of fun doing this, but it didn't get a lot of viewers. But I don't know if I want to necessarily just care... Like, I don't really care if something doesn't get a lot of views, but I also want to do stuff that I guess a lot of people are you know, wanting to see. I guess I want to entertain as many people as possible, in a sense. I don't want to, like, waste people's time with stuff that not as many people like, I guess, is is the neur neurotic thing that's going on in my head. But, but yeah, I could see myself doing more porn acting vids. That was a fun stream. I think I kind of did all of them last time, though. All the big ones, anyway. Um, two bucks from Mary McGregor. How much would it cost for you to wear his merch? Uh... You know, after I, after Corona ends and I go to the, uh, furry convention that I promised so long ago on my Patreon, which is gonna happen, the only reason it hasn't happened yet is Corona, but whenever that's not a problem, I'm going to that furry convention that you fuckers paid for, and after that we'll, we'll think about... <laughs> We'll think about another Patreon incentive. We'll 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 do uh three thousand a month. I drape myself in merch of all of my least favorite YouTubers. It'll be great. Uh, five bucks from Son of Angron. This guy is the worst thing we Brits have made since concentration camps and John Oliver. Ah, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't forget about that other dipshit who rides around in the car. Uh, rags dunking on him must have made him particularly salty. Oh, cinematic venom, yeah, well, uh, I don't know, I still haven't watched the EFAP stream. I'm, I'm probably going to at some point. Oh, uh, ten bucks from Carry On Storm. Too busy to stick around. Hope you are doing well, Claw. Penis, with a, a little underscore in the middle. You gotta get around Susan somehow. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, I am doing well, Penis. Uh, I hope you're doing good, penis, as well. Five bucks from Rocks Bobo. Hochi Mochi! Mochi Bosh. Uh, two bucks from Ross T. Toggle the Rat got outed. His YouTube is Exit Mouse. Chat member, come on. You can't give away the farm before I do my stream. But, <laughs> yeah, stick around. <laughs> That'll be the next coming days, probably. Two bucks from Spencer LaBelle. Steve Terraberry Light. Man, unrelated, slightly related, because Steve Terraberry did like a crossover thing with, uh, with, uh, 
uh, Dragon Force. And if you guys don't, if you're, if you have any interest in power metal or even just guitar, you gotta check out Dragon Force's YouTube channel. Cause whatever you have to say about the band, they actually are a pretty talented, fun band. And I know there's, it used to be like a meme to shit on them or whatever, but they're, they're a pretty fun band. And watching Herman Lee and Sam Totman just kind of like, like they'll, they'll make, sh they'll make shitty parody songs for bands like Nightwish or whatever in like 10 minutes. And they'll have the chat, you know, the stream chat go along with them. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're, if you're into like guitar stuff at all, I, I, I strongly recommend the Dragon Force YouTube channel because those guys, those guys have some fun. I, I enjoy when, uh, there's a really good video from them actually where Herman Lee was looking at the, um, the video of, what's her name, Phoebe Bridgers, like smashing that guitar on SNL. Apparently a pe bunch of people got mad at her because breaking a guitar is uh, white privilege. Uh, that's, that's where we are now. Uh, that's, this is the future. And you, uh, you people asked for this, uh, with your fucking trigger warnings, unironically. But, yeah, uh, he was looking at that, and he was like, man, this is stupid. This is just a lady rocking out. What's the problem? This, this is why rock music isn't fun anymore, because anytime you do anything fun, people get mad at you for the dumbest fucking reasons, so. Um, yeah, I recommend, recommend, uh, the Dragon Force channel. Uh, Buck from Hubby and Wifey Gaming. Thank you. Uh, five bucks from Chuck Campbell. Hey, Claw, not sure if you played the song I suggested last time you streamed. Fell asleep. Regardless, I hope that 12 bucks bought you some good booze. I, I don't, I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember what song it was, but, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stuck to my, my own stuff. Like, even sometimes when it's like, oh, this is, this would be a good funny meme song to open this stream. I kind of just prefer playing songs that I like. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just an idiot, but, but I do appreciate that. Five bucks from Ammon Metfees. Oh God, I just got on the stream and what do I see? The pretentious tiny little femboy himself. Thanks, I hate it, Father. Yeah, no, I told people we were doing a part two. Funny thing about that, he advertised that video with that fucking, uh, that thumbnail that was like, I hate everything and plink it with their eyes, like, blacked out with a sensor bar. And the only reference to plink it in that video was fucking the you didn't notice it but your brain did, uh, meme. Which maybe means he likes Red Letter Media? I really don't know. But he kept using them as, like, almost an example in the last video. So it leads me to wonder if he's just, like, afraid of mentioning them. <laughs> Which would be really hilarious, because he fucking should be. Um, five bucks from Simon Simons. Neo's Minecraft character's face is extremely punchable. Yeah, in Minecraft, I definitely agree. I would, I would hit that character in Minecraft with a, with a Minecraft shovel uh, multiple times in Minecraft. Uh, five bucks from Jenna Fryer. I love how much you love Red Letter Media. I'm in Len Kabazinski movies now, thanks to RLM. RLM for life. I'm guessing you mean you're you're getting into watching them and not you're in the movies, but if you are in the movies, congrats. If not, I uh I don't know. I that's personally that's not really my thing, but I mean Len Kabazinski seems like a fun guy and he's he's always fun when he shows up in the the, the RLM videos, so I do like him. Uh, five bucks from Ammon Metfee's Cinedoki Doki Illiterature Club. Yeah. R rem reminder, Cinedoki, New York. The, the classic film as uh, spoken to us by Neo Jesus. Uh, five bucks from Fire Moon Alice 31. Even the nerds would give him swirlies when he was in high school. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, five bucks from Chinese bong water torture. I got here late, so I don't know if it's been said, but this guy looks like Anthony from Smosh. Kind of somebody said he looked like Link from Rotten Link. Uh, he looks like a few people. I'm fond of the person who said that he looked like, uh... Oh god, who was it? What was... What was the one... I missed it. Somebody, somebody had a good... Oh yeah, Steve Terryberry Light. That was the one. He does look like him. I, I agree with that guy. Uh, two bucks from Spencer LaBelle. I uh, was the guy who, who, who said that before. My dad farted seconds before I sent this. Well, you know, we're, thank you for keeping us uh, up to date. That was important. Five bucks from 
M and Metfi's Neo Jesus is the type of flat brain to unironically think Hitler was justified and Gein had good taste in furniture and that Griffith did nothing wrong. Oh no, he'd shit on you for your your enjoyment of pleb tier anime like Berserk. He would be more into uh he'd be more into like I don't know season two of Promise Neverland or some shit. Uh Five bucks from Takara's Asylum. It's my birthday tomorrow. Loved your channel for years. Far too... You know, it really has been years. Thank you for saying that. I can't believe people can now say they've watched me for years. But uh, it's been at least two. Uh, loved your channel for years. Fight far too shy for Discord. Thanks for the laughs and content, my guy. Well, thank you. I will say our Discord's a very uh, welcoming place. Sometimes to a fault. <laughs> sometimes sometimes I'm left wondering how certain people wound up in my discord and I'm like really you watch me with the kind of shit you're saying in the politics chat okay uh, go you know do what you want I guess welcome we welcome everybody but if you act like an idiot we might make fun of you but <laughs> you know for the most part it's a very very welcoming place so do feel free to join sometime if you wish five bucks from filthy casual but let me talk about context context is dc saw what mcu was raking in and wanted a piece of that yeah that's the context for the entire dceu frankly i mean we we really don't need more context than that a hundred dollars from marcus brock no message but thank you very much marcus brock uh big, big ol the big bucks from from your boy thank you uh, two bucks from Mr. Strider. This dude evokes the pure essence of Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another 69 from Marcus Brock. Love your content. P.S. You sound like Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon. Is that the main guy? Because I've heard I look like him before. <laughs> but thank you. I, I'll assume that's a compliment. Thank you. Uh, and thank you very much for, for the donation. Two bucks from Ira Rifson. Uh, as an autist, the pedantry has to be autism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I Again, I haven't used... Listen, I haven't been a V regular for, like, almost ten years. Like, I'll, it's been a while at this point. Actually, it has okay, it hasn't been that long. It's been, like, six years. I haven't been a V regular for, like, six years. But that being said, sometimes... Sometimes I see something and I'm just like, yeah, this is autism, but people won't let me say that because that's like a slur now or something. You can't, you can't, can't make jokes like that anymore. Uh, add that to the list. But yeah, sometimes you see it and you're just like, yeah, there really is no other argument. There, like, there's no, there's no other explanation for this. This guy's probably just autistic and maybe we should stop making fun of him. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I like to hold everybody to... The standard of what they put out there, at least. I don't know. Uh, five euros from Katrina X. You're so funny. Oh, thank you. You're so vain. You probably think the super chat is about you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Ten bucks from Marcus Brock. I love the Michael Bay Transformers movies and hate Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I have bad taste in movies. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty bad. I, I don't particularly like Thor Ragnarok. I only saw, like, half of it. I might like it more now. I wasn't interested at the time, but uh, then I never really cared about Thor or the Hulk that much, to be honest. Uh, but but yeah, uh, Michael Bay Transformers movies, not good. I can understand if you enjoy them for whatever reason. I Don't let me stop you there. I never want to stop somebody from enjoying something, at least if they recognize that something is bad and maybe why it's bad also. And then I'll be okay. And th then I won't have my eye twitching for six hours wondering why they have the wrong opinion. But, you know, that's fine. <laughs> Two bucks from Evil Betty. Go watch Kabuki Star Wars. Oh, I'm busy with Turkish Star Wars later, but I'll check that out. It sounds fun. Uh, five bucks from JP Fan 1989 Once again, maybe biased, I know, but if they did something like Jurassic World, which gave fans what they wanted and the trilogy actually had a plan in place... Uh, Jurassic World's pretty bad too, but I mean, I th I would say it's from what I've seen of it anyway, it's at least better put together. Uh, the least the two the two films fit together a little better than Star Wars, so yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. They were gonna have that guy, Colin Trevorrow, write the third movie. And it was... It did actually look better than what we got. Uh, it had a lot of stupid problems in its own way, like trying to make Ray and Poe a thing. Like, the... the the, the least likely selection of, of, of ships to happen. Like, less likely than fucking Poe and Finn. But he tried to make that a thing. I don't know. That was stupid. But the rest of his script was actually, yeah, okay. More interesting than the, what we got. Um, two bucks from Evil Hero Diamond Cat. Any plans on going on to EFAP? Also, Neo Jesus sucks. I have no plans for anything, honestly. I have plans to move. And, uh... You know, the problem with me is... I don't know, the last... I haven't looked at Twitter in a long time, and I know sometimes people might try to send me a, a message or something on Twitter. I just don't use my Twitter anymore because it's depressing. Uh, I feel worse when I look at Twitter. Uh, even just the interface at this point. It's a Pavlovian response, and I just feel depressed. Uh, so I don't want to invite that back into my life. I'm thinking about just deleting my Twitter entirely, honestly, but, uh, uh don't, you know, no longer give people the idea that I'm even going to be on there. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, uh, so basically what I'm saying is sometimes people might try to get in touch with me through Twitter, because they have before, not EFAP, but, like, YouTubers have you know, uh, reached out to me through my DMs, and I just never check my Twitter anymore. So I guess if you're a, a YouTuber watching this and you want to hit me up, uh, send me an email, probably is the best option. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I'd consider it, except that they go for, like, nine hours, and I don't have that kind of stamina. Ten bucks from Arch Yoda 7. The expectations aren't that high. People defend the prequel trilogy. Good idea. Bad execution. Just make okay movies, that's it. Yeah, I mean, the prequel trilogy, uh, I hate to be that guy, but yeah, it certainly does look a lot better in comparison to the sequels. Because, I mean, at the very least, it had original ideas. And it, it did some of them okay. And the, the prequels led to a lot of really good stuff that aren't the movies. Like, the fucking, I don't know, Battlefront games, or, you know, a bunch of other stuff. It expanded the universe in a way that, again, it didn't help the movies particularly, but it's good for Star Wars as a, again, as a universe. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the prequels are better in that way, certainly, than the, uh, than the sequels, that's for sure. Five bucks from Filthy Casual. Came in here as soon as she plagiarized GTA V. Took me two minutes to form out a, com a comment Susan approves of. Fuck this platform and be on yo D N lol. Uh, I don't know what the B part is. Bitch on yo dick? I don't know. Uh, plagiarize GTA 5? Oh, the girl in the shitty dealer video. Yeah, that was awful. Um, I wouldn't say it was a plagiarism, though. It was just awful. Uh, this is a... Five bucks from Maggie Giles. This is a 13-year-old girl wrote a Wattpad fanfic of a drug dealer and then made it a script. And that 13-year-old girl's name was Neo Jesus. Uh, five bucks from Silly Palm. Boy, I'm glad that I could join in a live stream. I hadn't expected to actually need the sake that I bought today. Or to, that I brought to work today. Oof. Well, try not to get too hammered on the job. You're not Tony Stark here. Uh, but, but, yeah, uh, I can see needing alcohol. I didn't have enough, honestly, for this stream. I could've used more. Uh, five bucks from Simon Simons. Late, so I'm still on the Star Wars bit. The first two movies were okay, the rest sucked, and most expanded content sucked. Star Wars just isn't good. Well, that's not true. That's just an incorrect opinion. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, I guess a lot of the expanded universe stuff was bad, but... The, you know, there's always more shit than the few really good shining diamonds in the rough, you know what I mean? Like, of course there's more bad than there necessarily is good, but the good that is there is really interesting. Uh, especially like Knights of the Old Republic, and mostly games, honestly. Star Wars has been better for video games than it has for movies. It has an infinitely better track record as video games. Um, but also some of the books are pretty good, too, so I don't know, I wouldn't say that. 
Uh, I would say that it's got more bad movies than it has good ones. Uh, there's been like a fucking 90% shit ratio of Star Wars movies at this point. It's wild. Uh, five bucks from Arbiter365. Bland edginess with no point. I can see why he likes Suicide Squad. Yeah, you're, you're joking, but you're not joking. Uh, ten bucks from M and Matt Fees. Ah, yes, the pinnacle of filmmaking. Nasally girl squ swears a lot, hates anime, and complains about everything. Step aside, Tony Stark. Step aside, Guts. This is the real deepest, most complex protagonist. Okay, well, Tony Stark is not the most deep, complex protagonist. He's interesting. He is more deep than people give those movies credit for. That's another thing about that shitty, confused Matthew video, is like, let's let's completely disregard the really interesting character arcs that happen over the course of, like, multiple movies. That's, that's not... No, none of that matters. It's fine. They're all just scams. Big budget scams. What a fucking moron. Five bucks from Destiny is Lucid. Josh, you owe me a new hair crimper. You said you loved me, and then you left me standing in the rain. I'm kicking you out, and the dog stays with me. Oh, damn. Somebody's really mad at Burger Andy. Um, Ten bucks from Joshua Dillon. Neo Troglodyte is the ultimate example of being a contrarian to appease a need to be seen as a special snowflake. Also, he needs to keep his opinions away from clerks. He has nothing on Kevin Smith. Eh, I've heard some... I've heard some argument about if Kevin Smith is really any good, but, uh... Yeah, I, I don't know. Clerks is a pretty beloved film. I'm sure he he's ready to call it shit because of the dumbest fucking reasons. But I've never seen Clerks, so I wasn't qualified to watch his video making fun of Clerks, is, is my thinking there. Uh, two bucks from Filthy Casual, the Blockbuster Buster. Those laser pistol JP, JPEGs, too. I mean, yeah. That's the level. It's it's like sub-2010 reviewer. It's like worse than the average from back then. Ten bucks from Marcus Brock. Uh, Deadwing Dork. Please say, this is, this is Burke. There's like a comma between this and is. This is Burke. I don't know. I don't know how you want me to say it. Five bucks from Marcus Brock. Not my proudest wank. I right, listen. She's a, that lady from the... Blockbuster video. She was like a future Lady Dimitrescu cosplayer, so I mean at least at least we understand it. Five bucks from Mr. Skittles Maniac One. Oh god, oh man, missed two hours of the stream. Last stream was quite a ride. Love me a good drunk claw stream. Well, uh again, you know, the uh the reason I've been waiting to do this second part of the stream was because I wanted to have both parts uh done before I did the clips of Cinematic Venom and Neo Jesus. So tomorrow I'm probably going to put up, if not tomorrow, then soon I'm going to put up clips of those two and it's going to feature stuff from the, the first stream and the second stream today. So it's going to be a nice little co complete package. I'm going to magically jump from junk. I can speak. I'm going to magically jump from being incredibly fucking blackout drunk to uh, being just slightly drunk uh, on part two. It's going to be great. Um, five bucks from Squibbleable. Is humanity worth it? Eh, I don't know. Every time I look at TikTok, I feel like the answer is no. Two bucks from Mr. Skittles Maniac. One, just noticed DB Buster sounds like Toggle, Lamau. Uh, <laughs> funny reference to Toggle there. Funny you should bring him up. Once again, stick around for the next couple streams. Uh, something... So we, we might see some interesting stuff. Um, two, uh, let's see, two bucks from Nick Rustyson, or Russ Tyson, I don't know. Would Animat count for this stream? Oh, Animat, yeah, I know him. Uh, maybe for a part three, I'm familiar with Animat. He's really not that entertaining to watch, even though he is a bit of a, he's a, he's a bit cringy, but he's not as bad as like what we've watched now, so I feel like it wouldn't be wouldn't be on par, really. Five bucks from Thomas Radcliffe. These reviewers lack self-awareness and talent for what they do. They really do. It's surprising that they just... I don't know, maybe this is what they think they should be making. It's, it's weird. It's very strange that people that are much older than me have not realized how sad the videos they're making are. I, I just feel so... 
I just feel so depressed watching Linkara do anything, honestly. Five bucks from Peyton Chappelle. More shekels. Well, thank you. Uh, five bucks from Internet Nobody. You're into weird prog rock. What are your thoughts on Yamantaka slash slash Sonic Titan, if you listen? I've never heard of that, but, uh, I, you know, sounds like, sounds weird in Japanese, which I'm always down for. Uh, five bucks, or ten bucks from Silly Palm. What the hell, I just got my paycheck. Glad to have made my first live stream, and you, Dead Wing, could totally play a badass Baru Lars in a Star Wars flick. Uh, Aunt Baru? You really think I could pull off Aunt Baru? Damn. You know, you know you're, you're flattering me, chat members. I... You know, first it was the comparison to the how I met your dragon or whatever. <laughs> how I, how to get away with murdering your dragon or whatever that movie's called. And now it's Aunt Baru, so I mean, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, 350 from Hellraiser. Has anyone ever been as decided to even go look more like? Uh, that is the real question. That's the timeless question that no reviewer for the conduit on the Wii could ever answer, truly. Two bucks for two bucks from Khalil Young. Check out Wendy Vanity, aka Mad Cat Lady. Thank me later. Oh, I know about Mad Cat Lady. Uh Meow Meow I am a cat. She's great. Uh I looked at her like a year ago or something. She was pretty fun. Good suggestion, though. Five bucks from Hunter Valentine. I've been having a bad day, but I always look forward to your stream. Thanks, Claw Man. Well, you know, I I, I look forward to uh, I look forward when I do a stream to to being able to be there for people having bad days. I guess that sounds a little dumb, but uh, I uh, I know every time I stream, someone's like, "Man, this has been a shitty week," and I'm just like, you know, I'm not. It's not. It, it sucks that your week is bad or your day is bad, but you know if I can if I can be there to 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 compare your lives to other people's and feel better about yourselves, well then you know that that's a that's a public service honestly, and I'm happy to provide. Uh, but yeah, I, I am glad to hear you enjoyed. Uh, two bucks from the. The Snurchmeister, you are my favorite bear, Papa. Oh, thank you. I'm not a very huggable one. Don't get a plushie of me. Uh, it smells like uh, whiskey. You don't want that. Two bucks, or five bucks from Emily McCready. Missed your stream tonight, but I fell asleep with YouTube auto-playing and woke up in the middle of trash fetish stream playing. I still haven't healed. Oh, is that the one where the people are, like, in the in the bags filled with custard or whatever? Yeah, I remember that. I still had more trash fetish stuff to look at after that. Maybe I, should, I ought to do a part two to that someday. I don't know. It was a good stream. Um, finally, five bucks from One Man Show. You know, you're watching a cringy YouTube reviewer video when you're looking over your shoulder more than when you watch porn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can explain... You can explain Mia Khalifa. You can't explain Linkara. That's 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 an explanation. That's a conversation that no man should have with his wife. Uh, so that'll do it for the stream. Thank you everybody for stopping by. We're going to we're gonna end here on uh, what's a good song? Uh, ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why don't we do? Hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to find a good a good ending song. You know what? We'll end it on we'll end it on this one. Take it easy, chat. Oh, and penis.